Welcome to the fourth episode of the second season <laughs> of the Knights of Everflame. I'm Jason Bullman, your host and GM for this adventure. Is everyone ready to play? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, yes. I, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Yes. Well, that kind of <laughs> sounded like a yes. <laughs> um, why don't we get started? When we last left our intrepid band of adventurers, you were preparing to attend a gala. You had agreed to work with Lady Windland uh, to infiltrate the last fall gala, a art exhibit being put on by one Lucent Longfinger, who you also know as Lucky. You were hoping to get into this gallery, so, this gala, so that you could track down this halfling rogue, this this vile cur that had betrayed you, and possibly might even be tied up in the death of Achilles's father. However, getting in was no easy task. First, you had to look the part. The lady uh, tasked you with a simple chore. You just needed to bid and recover the painting, the last painting her son ever made in Last Wall before uh, everything fell. That was the one thing she wanted you to do. And in exchange, she would provide you with all of the funds and money necessary to be a part of this world of nobles, to dress the part, to look the part, and to enter this gala so that you might accomplish both your mission and hers. So to that end, she uh, took you all shopping to find the right clothes and the right look to be the part. Uh, two of you, uh, Tariel and Iculus, uh, were to play the part of nobles. Tariel <laughs> seemed to fall into that role quite easily, as everyone in Canarate already knows her <laughs> as uh, Lady Windhaven, uh, as a role that she was easily able to slip into. Iculus took on the role of a noble from Taldor. And the two of you, direct decked out in all of your finery, had uh, some servants come with you. Omelette uh, was posing as a uh, guard <laughs> to the lady and lord. Uh, her weapons peace bound to her, but at the ready. <laughs> Liz agreed to play as a valet uh, to the lady, uh, retrieving food and, and wine as needed. And Linnaeus was to play the lady's lady in waiting. So the five of you uh, uh, assembled yourselves, got in a carriage, and made your way to the gala. There at the front door, you met a Mr. Palestone, a dwarven butler of immaculate uh, appearance and perception, and he uh, uh, welcomed you all to the gala and uh, invited you to uh, enjoy the last that last wall had to offer. Making your way inside, you found the place swarming with nobles uh, from all walks of, well, noble life, uh, enjoying the art and bidding on the silent auction for these pieces. These treasures from a lost place, uh, a nation that had fallen to the dead. And here they were ghoulishly bidding on these pieces for their private collections. Indeed, they would be the last ones ever made. You split up and began uh, uh, wandering about the place, both looking for Lucky and attempting to find this painting. And throughout it, you encountered a number of interesting characters. You met the, uh, well, you didn't actually meet, the general lord uh, Leo Carcinus, uh, the uh, ruler of Corholm uh, to the north, who was uh, bolsterously holding the center of the floor as he talked to Captain Verdak Heton, the chisel-jawed, broad-shouldered, dashingly handsome soldier, who also, as it turns out, is Tariel's fiance. Well, supposed. I think you have to accept for them to actually be your fiance, <laughs> and you have not done that. No. Uh, but he thinks he is. <laughs> He's doing his best. <laughs> yeah, he, he tries. Um, you also uh, uh, ran into... Uh, uh, Linnaeus ran into uh, Zoria Spurnef, uh, a uh, rather eccentric halfling uh, with uh, streaks of dyed hair who uh, wandered about the place looking at the old architecture, creating illusions of it and storing them in her book so that she might learn from uh, the last wall and, and, and study it. She seemed particularly interested in a uh, dichotomy between light and dark, between heavy and lofty. Some of you, uh, I believe Omelette was nearly run over by Lady Tirana, yeah. the uh, boisterous noble woman who was walking around the party as if she owned the place uh, and ordering about her servants and uh, 
commenting on all the pieces and bidding outrageous sums of money and uh, just generally going around being uh, a nuisance. And uh, as, as you all made your way around, uh, a number of dangers presented themselves. Uh, Toriel nearly found herself face to face with uh, uh, Vertak, uh, Verdek, uh, but it carefully managed to avoid it and, and, and dodge him for as long as possible. Liz uh, went up to fetch food and refreshment uh, for uh, the lady, uh, but when they came out, they saw a woman that they had not seen for quite some time. Uh, the Lady Marguerite was here with Lord Dormstrom. The two of them, uh, having traveled from Druma, uh, they were attending this art gallery. Mm. <laughs> Let's put Liz into a bit of a panic. And they <laughs> went uh, to hide in uh, uh, one of the uh, 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 powder rooms uh, to avoid being seen. Uh, all of this coming together... Uh, uh, Toriel uh, ended up actually running in to uh, the captain after nearly being pulled right into him by Lady Tirana uh, and having him escort her around trying to talk to uh, 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 Toriel about his military conquests. <laughs> uh, it was all rather droll. <laughs> uh, uh, Liz, Liz ended up uh, finding out that uh, Lady Marguerite ended up out in the powder room with them. Liz confronted the woman. She had felt nothing but sorrow when she saw Liz. She explained that she was so sad that they had been sent away to Last Wall and that she had assumed that you had perished and she could not in some way help but feel responsible. But they never touched and the lady returned to the party. All of you started gathering together as this party rolled on you. You made sure to place uh, bids on the, on the painting to make sure that you maintained the high bid on it. But that is when the doors to the Grand Gallery upstairs opened and Silor Pratt stepped forward to introduce the star of the show, Lucent Longfinger. And he came out and thanked everyone and informed select guests that the private exhibit would be open. Seeing Lucky for the first time made many of your bloods boil. Mm. And you quickly rushed to go into this private exhibit hoping to run into Lucky there. You, well, browbeat the guards into letting you in by making a scene. And they eventually looked at you and <clears> said, <throat> well, you sure you want to go in there? And you said yes. You ventured inside to find that the private exhibit was far more terrifying and horrible than even the ghoulish art that was being sold out front. Because in back, it was not ghouls, but it was zombies, actual undead soldiers being auctioned off as pieces of art. The last soldiers of Last Wall being sold. You ventured further in to find horrors even deeper than that. You found a artist carving up the dead and melding their forms together into some amalgam beast. And there, up on a balcony, was Lucky holding court, king of his domain. Well, this surely would not stand, and you promptly made your way into the room and started making a scene of things. Lucky saw you, and uh, in a rather brash dismissal, asked the guards to escort you out. But that, well, that would simply not stand, and things got chaotic from there. Zombies were let loose, the amalgam broke free, and a mass combat engaged with guards and the knights and zombies left and right. But at the top of it, at the crown of it, was Lucky. And as you fought your way up to his balcony, where he was holding court, he walked up to a mirror, said goodbye, and stepped through it into a darkened warehouse. Once on the other side, he used a dagger to stab at the mirror, and it shattered, closing this magical doorway behind him. Racing up to pick up the shards as the zombies fell, you looked into them, and through them you saw a darkened warehouse. Through the windows of this warehouse, the light cast in, as you could see Lucky making his way down, whistling with a bit of a hop in his step. 
out the windows you could see a harbor and in that harbor you could see a rather peculiar looking double lighthouse and by that i mean it has two lights atop it this is what achilles and Liss saw and we are going to pick up exactly at that <clears throat> moment we're not just we're not skipping forward at all we are still in the middle of this nightmarish scene where well, we still have two zombies up don't we actually there's only one and it's really badly hurt and the guards are taking care of it i'm not actually going to have you roll initiative for one zombie that has eight hit points left um is there any sign of a uh, of a uh, of help coming um so a moment later tariel you sent a message out to uh 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 verdak uh, telling him that there were undead back here and they had broken free. You got a message back that was basically, Undead? I'll be there in a moment! And uh, that that's the message you got. And a few moments later, the doors do burst open. Uh, uh, Verdak comes in holding one of the guards by his neck as if he stood in his way. And he kind of tosses the guard aside and he's like, What's going on back here? And with him... Is, gen is the general Lord Leo Carcinus, and he has his weapon drawn. Um, and the two of them are just like, Ma, and they come charging into the room. That zombie like goes down in half a second. Um, it was also really one, badly the hurt. One, uh, in the one cage, of the, one, the opening room. Oh, yeah, well that, one's, that one was in a cage and still in the cage, so you're not sure if it's still alive or not, but. That um, was my next target. Yeah, uh, fair enough. I'm raged and can't stop till they're all gone. <laughs> Aren't fair. there four cages total? So there'd be two there more. There were five than cages in... total. Oh, then there are still some in cages in this room. There are two in this room and one in the other room. Um, uh, just to keep things moving yeah. along, they're in cages and not really capable of fighting you very well in those. So you, you can destroy them. I'm just That's, gonna, that's yeah. what I am I've, doing during this scene. I would help destroy, absolutely. Just, yep. <laughs> yep. Listen, sure. he has escaped. Yes. He stabbed a nobleman, and then he escapes through the mirror and broke it. Verdak comes rushing up to you, and he's like, What happened here, my love? My paramour? What? What is happening? And he flashes kind of a wry smile, despite this kind of scene of horrors. Well, um... Um, well, the, as you can see, they're undead in, in these cages. And one was in the middle of the room, and it was being formed into a massive thing and it just it went to chaos and lucky loosened, loosened. the uh general lord leo carsonist looks to uh uh verdak and just says secure this room i'm going to go get the gods and he leaves to go fetch and you're gonna wager he doesn't mean the house guards yeah he's going to get the town guard hmm. i have been gathering as as mu as much as possible like every time i i like i've been i've been trying to imprint upon myself everything i'm seeing through the glass as long as it will allow me to look through it so by the time anybody else, else is up there to you they have returned to just being ordinary shards of glass mirror i very foolishly smash my fist into a couple of them and cut my cut myself up yeah you end up with a bit of a bloody hand but you do you have imprinted the scene mm -hmm. and the one thing that sticks out to you most of all is that weird lighthouse out the window mm -hmm. um the warehouse itself was filled with crates and boxes and and barrels and stuff and really have i ever seen that lighthouse before maybe you have it was only a few days ago now when you were cr you're not sure you were like wait is that was that in Corholm? no no, the, you remember the lighthouse in Corholm. It was just an ordinary lighthouse. Now you remember where you saw it. It's here. It's in Canterite. <gasps> He's in the trade. Is it the trades uh, tradesman abode? So the 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 city of Canterite has two docks, and um, Tario would be able to tell you this. So even if you don't know, uh, the trades folk abode, the tradesman abode, does not have docks associated with it. The anything that comes in and out of the docks has to go through the the noble district, and they have to all pay taxes and stuff. It's a bit of a mess. Um, uh, the the main docks, and there are two of them. One is a military dock where they build all the warships for Molthoon and whatnot. Um, the other, though, is their commercial dock, and that one's. Uh, 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 you saw that as you crossed the river uh, to enter the town. So you know where that dock is, and that is where you saw um, the lighthouse. And the lighthouse has two reflecting mirrors because there are, it's at the fork of a river, and there are, there's traffic coming from both ways, so it makes sure that it shines in both directions. Okay. 
We need to contact the captain. We need to leave. I think that the general is already taking care of that. We have to go now. I... No, we have to stay here and bear witness. I do think. Are you serious? What if the guards mean? come in here, we're probably in danger. If we run away, we're in danger. I'm sure, but we've just caused a lot of trouble. And, and we still don't know if we got that painting. And it's all on your family lane. So, Tariel, there's, there's, you know, you grew up in this town. Mm -hmm. And there's one thing you know about justice in Canarite. It is incredibly thorough and incredibly slow. Um, and that's the price you pay for being so thorough, right? So, um, and you're absolutely positive that having undead in the city is illegal, right? I mean, mm -hmm. looking around, this is not okay. Mm -hmm. the, the paintings and stuff were uncouth, but not technically illegal. Mm -hmm. The undead, yeah, these are not okay. Mm -hmm. And when the guards show up here, everyone's going to get apprehended and questioned, mm -hmm. everyone. I do think I know where L Lucky has gone, though. I saw in the really? pieces of glass, the, the shards of the mirror, a double lighthouse, like oh. the one we saw when we were coming into the city. That's not too far away. So he's still here. If you think that it is a good idea for us to leave, then let's do At that. At least one of us. I, one of if us. we're going, we're all, all going of together. Us. If we can all get out. We have to try. I think I could probably figure out a way to get us out through the kitchens. <gasps> I saw a, a door to the cellar down to the wine. Maybe there's a way out that way. Almost undoubtedly. Hmm. What about Stromja over there? He's currently like, there, there, it'll be okay. And he's like helping a nobleman up. And then he's like, oh no, you won't be okay at all. And this is the one whose head is caved oh. in and he just kind of sets him down. That one's not okay. He and dead? then he, he goes, oh, no. oh, that one? Like, I don't think he's going to get better. I could heal. Oh, I Very don't, cleric. I don't think so. This oh. one is, and he kind of, Oh, oh. Ooh, no. Mm. Ooh. Right, we don't have much time. We should go. Mm -hmm. I, but the painting. Yes. But the painting. We can put it in her name. Let's just go grab it. Lady wouldn't know. That we, everyone would see us then. The uh, tickets are technically in her name anyway. Yes. Her, the number is hers. It could be, yes. We could just make sure is it's it? put in her name. Number 14, yes. There, there, there's a decent chance this entire thing is going to not. not it doesn't happen. matter anyway. It's like, oh, what's going to happen at the auction at the place where everyone's about to get arrested? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't matter oh. at this point. That's what I'm saying. Yes. Just oh. grab the painting and let's just go. What are they? I mean, well, who's the sneakiest of yeah. us? They should grab it. Let's let's, let's see go. if we can go. Like sure. we have to go through the main room to get to the kitchens anyway, so we just grab it and go. We, okay. We have to talk to your man though. So yeah, see if he'll let us out. Uh, Verdak is currently helping nobles up, and and he's shouting at the kind of inept gallery guards that are here. Uh, and uh, and he sees you, and he says, "My paramour, what? We should get you to safety. This is no place to be." She's feeling ill. Can we take her somewhere? Well, yes, you should go back out to the, the gallery and wait for the guards. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right, uh, I yes. Yes. put I'm my arm under yours yes. to oh. guide you oh, out. Oh, I feel so oh. faint. My lady. Oh. Oh, God. Give me a performance oh. check. <laughs> okay. I mean. If you're going to put on a show. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh, do we have uh, our coins? Do we have our hero points? Oh, yes, of course. You all have uh, hero points. Mm. Uh. Here you go. I will have anything else we have to say. I mean, about this way. he's pretty dim. I don't think the DC is going to be that high, but you know. <laughs> uh, you do you. And you know what? For putting up with Lucky oh. getting away, <gasps> one more time. Oh, oh, that's fantastic. Oh, well, oh, you, you know what? This level of benevolence Here, is actually yeah, time scary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. keep I, one. I don't know how I feel. <laughs> I was a little overconfident there. We're going to two. Oh, oh, you're re-rolling. Oh, all right. I'm like, yeah, why did I get one back so much quick? Better. All right. <laughs> okay, 27. Ah, oh, uh, he's like, oh yes, get her to safety. I believe there's a fainting count up there. <laughs> That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's go. He was like, okay, he comes up to you and he like drops down to one knee and takes oh, your hand he and did. he's like, I'll see you soon. Okay. Yes. <laughs> soon. But As he smiles, there's like a ding. <laughs> there's not even enough light in here for that to happen. Um, <laughs> that was a bit dramatic. Is there but, an oh, island where they are sculpted? Shall we? Right, let's go. We should leave. 
My yeah, he's, he's literally got a torso like a triangle. Uh, all right. Dorito! <laughs> Beef. Beefy Dorito. Just walking Beefy Dorito. in front. Fainting lady, move! Move! Get out of the way! There's a guard there that's next to the door that's holding his neck. That, uh, he's like... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you're able to make your way back outside. The zombie that's in the cage that, that on the way out... Yeah. Looks like it ran up to the cage and was bisected by a blade, um, like from top to bottom. Nice. Uh, yeah, you're not sure which one did that, whether or not it was the general lord or whether or not it was the captain, but one of them took care of that one. Nice. Um, and you're able to make your way back out to the gala. It's kind of pandemonium out there. There's a lot Perfect. of people who kind of came running back out who are covered in blood. There's all this hush. You see people like gathering up their stuff to leave. There are people that are in the process of making an exit. Great. I would Daria, like to you... be light fingered. If oh. it, uh, yep. If we would so please the group and pick yes. up our painting. Yes, mm -hmm. I want to go into a corner and just start screaming bloody murder so people look at me and not the painting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, well you Stay go. Stay wailing you like go, a banshee. You oh, go and make you. a oh. bit of a <laughs> Faint right into Amla's arms. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Liz, can you make me a stealth check, please? I can indeed. I have my... Is there a distraction check? <laughs> my cloak. Uh, yeah, I'm going to give you a bonus to... to oh, yay! General... I rolled a natural 19. Um, mm, mm. Uh, plus stealth, um, which is a 14. That's so good. how is a 30-something-something a something for you? A 30-something-something something is, is going to be more than enough. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you uh, you uh, walk up and carefully, and the moment you hear, oh, and falling, uh, you just snatch <laughs> it up off the wall and make a hasty retreat. Hide it under my cloak. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, so uh, up the stairs to the yep. kitchens. Okay, nice work. Just, just carry me. Carry you. <laughs> oh, oh. oh. I'm oh. just like hand. Oh. Run, 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 run. Oh, I feel as, so faint. As you are all making your way up the stairs, you take one look out to see the kind of panic and pandemonium that has been caused at this particular art gala, <laughs> and. Um, uh, you know, you see Lady Tirana there shouting at people, and she's like, she's like grabbed a bottle of wine from someone directly, and is just like yelling at people. Uh, you see the uh, peculiar little uh, uh, halfling uh, just kind of looking very nervous and disturbed by the fact that this is all gone not according to plan, and that's not okay. Uh, and uh, Liz at the door, you see Lord Dormstrom and Lady Marguerite, and he is. Escorting her out of this place. And for just a brief moment, she looks back and her eyes kind of scan out over the crowd. You're not sure if she saw you or not, but she looked. This kind of clutches the painting to their chest and keeps moving and sort of just wistfully sighs to themselves. It was only a dream and keeps moving. You all make your way into the kitchen. Uh, the staff there is, uh, to be honest, most of them are just kind of standing around going and kind of asking like one of the guards, like what's going on? And then they're all kind of crowded up at the door. And when you come in and burst in, uh, they're like, hey, hey, th this isn't, this isn't, uh, this isn't an exit. And they're trying to stand in your way, but you're a noble. So they get just out of your way, even though they, they're like, you're not supposed to be here. Uh, I Excuse shouldn't us. push you. I'm sorry. Please don't touch me. Yeah. And I throw open the cellar door. <laughs> Down we go. Let's go. If there's a back way out, you still, You're just, very yeah. strong, Omelette. Um, <laughs> but very, very buff arms. Um, it's uh, quite nice. Since you are all uh, helping uh, Tariel out, uh, Iculus, can you give me an intimidate check just to get uh, these folk out of the way and see whether or not you can do so efficiently or whether or not you get held up? Uh, it's going to be a 18. 18 on the intimidate check. Mm -hmm. um, well, you kind of growl at him a bit, and and one of the one of the like the head chef just kind of stands in your way for a moment and is like, "Listen here, the, we can't be having people go this way. This isn't safe. You should go back out and be with the others." He looks like the only one here with any air of authority. <gasps> uh, we must get this lady to safety. We, she's not feeling well. As you can see, we have two ladies that are not. Fit. Yes, and what do I'm you think is going to happen down in the cellar? <laughs> Sir, 
You must get out of my way. As says, this is highly irregular. So there is a party for dead and dead. dead. <laughs> you what? Have any idea what happened? There were yet. undead in there. We need to leave. He looks at you yeah. like what? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. What are you talking about? Please go check for yourself. Uh, he suddenly looks very flustered. Uh, Why do you give think? Me, give me, think? give me a diplomacy check. Okay, that'll work. Oof. Twelve. 12. And he's like, out of the question. Listen, this is my <laughs> kitchen, and I can't have you traipsing around the cellars. There's nothing down there that's going to help her anyway. Go back. We need an exit, please. By the light of Seren Ray, see the goodness in your heart. The, the front entrance is completely blocked off, and we must make as quick an exit as possible. <sighs> All right, give me one more diplomacy check from this side of the table, please. I don't have any. I have a 10. I so what yeah. will it take? Oh, well, okay. you're, you're, Tariel, I can't let you do it. You're playing passed out. So you're. No, Linnaeus oh. is passed out. Oh, it's Linnaeus I'm just that's passed out. Oh, all right. I okay. Wasn't really passed out. Oh, yeah. No, I figured as much. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. No, go ahead and make me the check then. Well, good. Because I rolled an 18 and I have a 12 uh, oh, for, right. uh, wait, for diplomacy. 30. So that's a 30. Oh. <sighs> he kind of shrugs and sighs. <sighs> All right, and he 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 turns and uh, opens up the door, and he grabs a uh, a, a, a wall lantern, and he leads you the down the way. You Thank are you. Doing the Thank you so much. You're doing very much. the lights of Everflame a great flavor. He just kind of leads you down uh, into the cellar through the through the wine barrels and wine racks, and uh, out to the cellar door, which leads out to the garden. And he says, "Well, uh, this leads up to the gardens. Um, you'll you'll still have to leave the estate." Um, uh, I'm terribly sorry. I'll, 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 I'll go and see about that mess. He kind of just shrugs. Be safe. Yes. Thank you so Undead. much. Undead. Please be careful. Mm, he, um, Actually, it might be better if you dismiss your kitchen staff for the night. They do not deserve to get caught <laughs> up in this kerfuffle. He says, oh, the, the, the lord and lady of the house would be furious. <laughs> the lord and the lady of the house are going to have much bigger problems on their mm -hmm. hands in about five minutes. We can assure you of that. Um... You make your way out and leave him kind of standing in the doorway, uh, the light kind of pouring up from down below in his lantern, and he, he, you see him just kind of shake his head and make his way back down uh, into the cellar. Uh, you make your way away uh, from the gala, but you still have to leave the grounds because uh, you're, you're kind of in the middle of this, you know, the, everything up here is kind of, you know, manicured lawns and gardens and stuff, but it's always surrounded by either hedges or walls or something so that each one is a contained property. Um, so you, you, where do you go? I mean, you can make your way back up towards the front entrance. Um, do I know, through a hedge? do I have a decent idea direction wise, which way the docks are so that we can start heading? Well, first you have to get out of the district that you're in because right. it is a walled district up here. So you need to make your way out and then you need to head north. Okay. So is it possible to hire carriages outside? Um, well, Lady, uh, Winthrop's carriage should be waiting for you. All right, then let's go ahead and make our way around. Do you think you can send her a message to tell her to come over to the side or something that we can? Um, well, I think if we take the carriage to the docks, then maybe we can send the carriage back with the painting inside of it. What if well, the guards are coming in the front entrance? Because that's, that's what I mean, is I want, the, I want, right now the carriage is waiting for us at the front entrance. Come to the side of the building, pick us up there, oh, is what yes. I mean. Yes, yeah. We could send a message to the, to the, the driver. The, yeah. Yeah, which is the uh, which is the uh, the, the manservant, yeah, or yeah. Dempley. 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 Dempley, yeah. Um, or, all right. Is that possible? Is there a side? Is there a side? Was there a side entrance? There wasn't a side entrance that you saw. I mean, you came in the front entrance, yeah. so you don't know if there is a side entrance. I, I mean, you haven't there explored would be for this the place. servants. Is there like a hedge that we can climb? I don't. I'm know. gonna take a quick, like, I want to get a quick right. lay, lay mm -hmm. of the land here. All right, uh, Liz. You go to sneak off and, and kind of give uh, yourself a, a better sense of this area. Give me a stealth check. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> there are guards on the ground. Give it coins. Um, I, coins, coins. Don't waste it. Yeah. What are you doing? Uh, I'm going to give you a coin. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Still have one. Yes. Still have one. That's, That's better. Yes. That was worth it uh, because now I have a twenty-eight. 
All right, so you managed to uh, sneak past the guards uh, that are just kind of... Most of them are not really paying attention to what's happening on the outskirts. They're all kind of looking at the house where there are shouts and yells um, coming. Uh, but they're still kind of patrolling the grounds just to make sure that nothing out here is wrong. Um, and you make your way uh, around the place. And yeah, lo and behold, there is a servant's entrance. They don't want them coming in the front. Mm -hmm. I mean, that would be... Improper. Um, so there is a servant's entrance, but it's not on the side, it's in the back. Um, and it's a, a simple gate that, you know, you would need to get ring to get let in from the outside. But from the inside, it's just a latch. All right. Okay. I will go back and I will uh, inform them that there is a back way. And if we can get the carriage back this way, then we have a clear, clear exit up here. Perfect. Uh, then I will send a, uh, I'll send a message to, uh, Dem Dempley. Dempley? To meet us at the serv uh, servant's entrance. In the back. In you, the back. you get a response back a moment later that's like, well, that's most irregular, but <laughs> but very well. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. All right, everybody. Let's go. Let's go. Just so you know, I have not let you down. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> I'm quite enjoying it. Good. <laughs> I kind of need this. Yeah. I'll put my arms around your neck and just hold on. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, of course. Mm. All right, so the group of you are now making your way to the back entrance, which means you do have to get past one of the guards. Okay. So uh, this is, uh, you can stealth it, you can bluff it. Uh, you tell me. Military what, guard or art guard? These are art I guards. Oh, okay. now. I do have quiet allies, so between, between those of us with some stealth ability here, we can probably get everybody out, but I, I would be Good rolling study. with a six as my bonus. I have... Zero yeah. stealth. That's so. what I mean. It's like, <laughs> I was, my, my bonus would just be. You got a stealth. No, no, no. I'm holding you. Don't matter. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Take mine. Wait, stealth with me. No, I, I would just be rolling with the lowest. Basically. Yeah. If, if, so the, 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 the feat that Liz has uh, uh, allows them to kind of just roll one check one for the check. whole oh, group great. As, okay. as you all kind of follow their instructions. Okay. And then with follow the expert, uh, you can make sure that the people with no bonus at all, at least at their level, um, and there are two of you, and we did this last season, yep. yeah. um, mm -hmm. where uh, you can at least roll with a bonus of six, and you only roll once. The advantage of only rolling once is that somebody doesn't roll low, yeah. and then you end up failing just because one person randomly Great. rolled low. Oh. But it does put everything on one die roll. If you want to do that, you can. Here we go. Natural 19 plus six. Ooh. Yes. You sneak right past that garden to the back <laughs> gate. He uh, is paying attention to whatever's going on inside. And as he is standing there, in fact, <laughs> there is a chair that gets thrown through a window uh, on the on the ground floor. And uh, the, you are almost to the back gate when you see the gate open and you see Lady Tarana's <gasps> manservant <laughs> climb out. And he, she gets out, and you, you see him look back over his shoulder. Well, screw you! And then he goes <laughs> running off towards the front. Be free! Be free! In, in, in Liz's heart, they just they cheer uproariously for this poor, poor man uh, yeah. who has definitely been treated horribly. Get your own wine, he screams as, she, as he goes running off towards the front. Okay, so <laughs> you Beautiful. all make it to the back gate and are able to pop the latch, and they're waiting for you is the carriage. And Mr. Uh, Mr. Dem Dem Dempsey? Dem Dempley. Dempley, that's it. Dempley. Forgetting Dempley. that name. Dempley. 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 I'm going to write it down. We pile right into that carriage. Oh, yes, let's get inside. <laughs> uh, we need to go to the commercial docks, please and thank you. Immediately, please. He's, he's like, at, the, at this time of night? Yes, please. <laughs> Very yes. important. We have the painting. He's like, oh, well, the, the, the lady will be quite pleased. Uh, very well. Uh, and uh, he kind of, yeah, and, and kind of takes you on your way. I have to spend any gold on that painting. Mm. We got out of there. Um, we did it. Just... High fives all around. Oh, Yay. Fantastic. Ooh, as, ooh. as the wagon rolls ooh, back ooh, around it's okay. the front, it's okay. you see, like, as you're kind of making your way around the houses up here, you see a column of mounted guardsmen come riding up to the estate, followed by a wagon with more guards in it. The, the Canarate guard has been called, and they have arrived in force. <laughs> um, and they go pulling up to the front of this, the, the last fall gala, mm. and uh, promptly dismount and begin rushing inside. Mm. Meanwhile, the five of you just barely managed to avoid that particular fate and ride off into the city.
as you make your way north, uh, 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 Dempley um, um, says, I will, I will take you to the docks at, the, at this time of night, but um, uh, wh where do you want to go? Just... We, we are... Warehouse, right? There's warehouse. a warehouse. We, if there's a warehouse area at the docks, that is where we should go. With a good, good view. With a good view of the, of the lighthouse. He kind of shrugs. Um, oh, all right. And um, he, uh, he takes you there. Now, the, the journey there takes uh, uh, at least like, it takes you at least about 10, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. So uh, if folks want to do any medicine or do any mm -hmm. uh, lay on hands or anything like that or regain a focus, still... you have time to do that. Um, you can also change out of your dress clothes if you want and just strip back down to your armor and stuff. Like I'm going to get my weapons back from Omelet. Yeah. Who, who, Lay on hands. Who, yeah, who's Thanks. I, I'm quite okay. I didn't take much damage during mm, that. I Good. didn't take any. You already I, I, I got a heal in you, yes. I must admit, I like this ascot. I know. You should keep this it. is all very fancy. I, mean, I like it, this dress. I think it, these belong to us now. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> uh, some of it was was uh, the ladies' jewelry yeah, and stuff. That, so not some all of it's yours. Some of it belongs but, to us. But the clothing, well, it's already been tailored to you, so. Mm. <laughs> yes, it was your house sigil. Yes. Although. Yes. Uh, running around <laughs> doing adventuring in it means that it will not be fine fancy clothes for well, long. That's why Just we so can, we, can we, we roll it up and mm -hmm. I can put it in my in our back. Oh, your bag of holding. My bag of holding. Oh, yeah. I, I, I think I would like. Nicholas would like the maybe yeah. the Talden military outfit. Yeah, mm. I want to. At least the the uh, dress. badges. Or whatever those were, medals. Yeah, looking at them, I mean, you you recognize them as as like you know badges that you would earn. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you know, uh, there's a part of you that's like wearing badges you haven't earned isn't isn't really <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, I earned them. Oh uh, well, fair. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, but you know, yeah, yeah, for but... now at least they're part of the disguise. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you never know when they might be needed. Yeah. Uh, so um, you're able to at least make yourselves not be tripping over so, frilly gowns or anything like that while you're... It is going to be very difficult to ascertain where his exact location is once we get there. We need to figure out as much about this specific area as possible. What, what can you tell us? I don't know if you've ever been there. I don't want to assume that you have. But what would you say is, uh, are there any specific haunts that way or hidey holes? Is this something I would know? The docks aren't exactly a place that a lady goes very often. Um, now, that said, I mean, you know, your childhood was all about sneaking out of the house and going places you weren't supposed mm -hmm. to go. Yeah. So, I mean, you have been to the docks Were before. There, are there taverns at the docks? Of course there are. Oh, then I've definitely been there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there, there are there. Yeah, I mean, uh, docks and taverns go together like fish and So water. much yeah, we've that's um, that's um, I've learned how to play all these sea shanties. To go to a tavern is... I don't think he would. He's very I, cocky. He is very he cocky. Is very mm -hmm. cocky. He did. He did. Does think he got away scot free? That's for sure. Well, we can always ask around. You saw him see whistling. Anyone has seen yes. him? Yeah, he it's was. The the only thing the only thing you got from that is that he he wherever that led to was inside of a warehouse, um, because it had like a roof and stuff. I mean, you could tell that it was inside, and there were nothing but it was just filled with like crates and barrels and stuff. It was big. It was a big place. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, along one side, you could just see this window looking out at the harbor. And your the view of it, while probably not unique, will definitely, like, once you arrive and you all kind of pile out of the carriage, you look around and you're like, oh, this clearly isn't it, mm. right? Because you uh, uh, Dempley drops you off just kind of in the middle of the, mm. the, <clears throat> the, the docks. Mm -hmm. We were and painting in the carriage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He says, "Oh, very, very good. Would you would you like me to wait, or shall I return to the lady?" We don't know how long this is going to take. Yeah. He looks around and he's like, "Well, I'd, I'd much rather return to." Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why we think yeah. it's probably mm -hmm. a well, well, safer so port. Take off the tunic and fold and it up nicely, and, and, and yeah, yeah and everything that's not ours. He, he says, but very well, I shall return these to the lady then, and I shall, uh, of course, send you her regards. Yes, please extend our thanks. Thank you, Dimpley. Oh, and the five thousand gold. gold. Yeah, we, oh, yeah. Oh, and so we definitely leave the gold with all of it. So, yeah, it, it was always just a letter of mark anyway. Yeah. It wasn't, she didn't actually oh. hand you five thousand gold yeah, pieces. Okay. Yeah. 
She she gave you a letter of mark which was good for five thousand. Yeah, yep. uh, leave that with yeah, all the IO uh, noble IOU. They don't <laughs> carry around giant sacks of money <laughs> on them. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, that's not a problem. Uh, so uh, he says, well, the lady will be most pleased, um, assuming nothing untoward happened there. <sighs> nothing that was our fault. It we did not an start an eventful gala. He shrugs. Well, good enough for me. And uh, he says, very well, I wish you all the best of luck and um, have uh, uh, a good time at port. And uh, with that, he kind of uh, uh, whips the horse and uh, the carriage uh, pulls off and makes its way back into the town. Uh, moments later, it's uh, you know creaking wheels across the cobbles fade into the distance and you find that the only sound you can hear now is the sound of water lapping at the docks Far off in the distance, you can hear some tavern with sea shanties bellowing out of it uh, and the occasional call of a night bird down at the docks. I want to try and triangulate our position, try to get a feel for which direction is probably best to... Uh, so, yeah, looking at where the, the lighthouse is located and how it looked through the window, um, you're pretty sure it you're at the, the wrong end right you're, you're kind of in the middle and this looked like it was kind of at one extreme angle so it, it probably has to be at one of the ends okay um and from your view of it give me a, a survival check this is going to be to kind of track by like looking at vision and figuring out where you might be um that is going to be a 26 so a 26 is, is, is pretty good. And uh, you kind of look around and just looking at the angle of it, um, you're like, ah, it must be, you're pretty sure it's, it's got to be to the east just from the way you were looking uh, at it. Okay. I start, uh, I motion in the direction of the east and I, <clears throat> I start heading that way. Yeah. Because... Uh, yeah, the 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 window uh, was uh, on the on the like left side of the thing, and you could see the 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 lighthouse uh, in the distance in that way, which would mean to see it from that angle, it would have to be to the east of the lighthouse. So um, you begin making your way east, uh, and uh, soon you find yourself down at the point where you you look back at the lighthouse, and it must be lined up roughly right. At this point in time, it has been about half an hour since Lucky stepped through the mirror. Yeah. He's definitely not going to be anywhere near here at this point, but at least we have a starting po position to go from. Mm. What's, what have we passed on the way here? What seems to be in this general area? It's all just warehouses. Um, there was one bar, um, tiny little place, uh, not even like an inn or anything like that. It's just kind of a, a row of seats at the bar facing out at the water um, with, uh, you know, and, and that's it. You could actually see the people in there drinking. There's just a rail at the front. Um, even though it's cold, there's just a, you know, that's it. They just hang out with the water at their backs, drinking. Then I think we have a group of people that we need to question. We need to interrogate, absolutely. Hopefully one of them wasn't uh, sober enough to actually have noticed. You're pretty sure you must also be at the point where uh, if your intuition is correct, one of like three warehouses must be the one that he went into. Yeah. I am going to, I would like to look inside the warehouses to make sure somebody mm -hmm. with the ability should go, perhaps question. I'm happy to question the these. Bar. I'll go with you. These people. Okay, great. I'm going to check the other side, just in case there's like a dinghy boat or something that he got away on, on the dock side. Okay. So that so means, you're going to check the docks. I'm going to check the dock. All right. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, it's all piers here, by the way. That's mm. that's all that there is down here. And there are lots of sailing vessels and barges and stuff all moored here. Um, so, uh, Omelette, you go start looking across the docks. Iculus and Linnaeus, it sounds like the two of you are going to go question the folks at the bar. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lys and Tariel, the two of you, are going to go check the warehouses. Okay, let's keep things moving. Uh, out at the uh, boats, you go uh, wandering up and down the docks. Mm -hmm. You don't really find anything unusual. Um, there are guards down here. 
Um, like because boats of this size and this expensive, like they have guards twenty four seven, right? Mm. You don't, there are people on them. Um, and uh, some of the guards are like, "What's your business here?" As you make your way down one of the you know one of the docks, looking for a fugitive. <laughs> they look at you. Ain't nobody come this way since uh, this afternoon. That's very helpful. Thank you. Uh, they kind of shrug and look at each other. <laughs> oh. No, nobody in and on the boats at all this evening, maybe like a half hour ago. Uh, they, they look at each other. No, I haven't been in, seen anybody this way since uh, before sundown. Okay. All quiet here tonight. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Mm. The two of you make your way to the bar. There's a bunch of kind of salty old sea hands here uh, drinking away their trouble. Many of them are deep into their cups this late at night. Because remember, it is closing in on midnight. Um, and, uh, you know, like of the, of the eight stools, uh, there, uh, all but two are occupied and of the six that are filled, mm -hmm. half of those are already face down on the bar and the other three, uh, one is drinking by himself and the other two are dicing and drinking. Hmm. Uh, you have a truth spell? Well, I have a restore <laughs> that might lessen their, their drunkness oh, in case we need it, a restoration. I also have a, a restore senses, just in case. Mm. Okay. Uh, let's go to the barkeep. Uh, yeah, a big burly uh, fellow, uh, looks like a half-orc. Uh, uh, one uh, chipped tusk sticking out from his, his lip and he's mm. like, what can I get you? And uh, he, he's he's polishing this mug, and at that you can see he's missing like two fingers from like the knuckle forward. And uh, what can I help you with? Uh, We're looking for someone. We don't need any any drinks right now. We uh, then shove off. <laughs> no, no j just a question for you. Have you happened to see the little halfling running through here? Dressed very well. Whistling, he, maybe? He, he, goes down, he goes down to the two stools that are empty and kind of leans over and looks down. No, don't see any halfling there. Haven't seen one of those here tonight. Why? Uh, we're, we're looking for him. He has something that belongs to us. Do you know a man named Lucent? <laughs> he looks at all the, the other uh, salty uh, sailors at the bar. I don't know, gents, do we know anyone named Lucent here, <laughs> and they're like, I, I, I served a Lord Lucent once uh, down in Absalom. And then he passes back oh, out. Uh, well, <laughs> okay. Mm. Can you ha happen to tell us about the warehouses in the area? Ah, he's like, oh, I, I'm mostly owned by the local, uh, you know, shipping companies and... Uh, Boat owners and whatnot, uh, uh, used to store goods. Mm. Would you happen to know if there was a boat carrying art? He looks at you and he's like, uh, not unless one of these drunks knows, and they all kind of, uh, 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 he's like, well, I don't think so. And yes, I don't know if we're going to get anything out of this people. I don't think so either. Shit. Um, Has anyone seen a halfling? Anyone? No. Absolutely. One of one of the drunks kind of one of the drunks kind of pops up and he's like, "I dated a halfling once." <laughs> Not helpful, sir. He's he's like, "Oh, oh all right," and then he just kind of goes back to face down on the table. Uh, perhaps I will get a drink from you, sir. <laughs> Wait, we should probably go look at the warehouse, see if there's a clue. I got fish grog. <laughs> uh, no, thank you. <laughs> Gross. Uh, what would be the closest warehouse to this? No, there's one like right behind right it, right? I mean, they, they, it's all warehouses okay. down here, right? When you're this close to docks, it's nothing but warehouses. Okay. Any of the businesses are just going to be tucked into like open spaces near them. So like there's bait shops and there's things like that, but they're all just like tucked into corners of warehouses and stuff like built into them. This, in fact, is tucked into the base of a warehouse, okay. um, you know, and it's just this bar. So uh, meanwhile, Liz, Toriel, the two of you... Um, kind of scope out around these warehouses. Are you just scoping around inside or are you gonna try and break in? I want to see if any of them have been left open because he was in one of them, he okay. possibly exited. I don't know if he has a key, it's possible one of them is open, so I'm just gonna try some doors. All right, you go around and try uh, a bunch of the doors on all three of them, the front doors, and all of them are locked. Do they have back doors? 
Uh, well, they're pretty big buildings, um, and I you start to... scoping around them, and that's when you make a uh, discovery. Oh. Um, you scope around all three buildings, and something doesn't seem right. And it takes to get around all three of them before you realize it. None of the windows are right. None of the windows look like the windows that you saw. This is very strange. Like some of them have windows, but <clears throat> this one had like a long running window. Like, you know, it was like multiple panes of glass all tied together with no wall between them. So it's just like a long thing, a long window. This... Um, all of these have like tiny little windows or no windows at all on the side. That is not right. I, I must have made some kind of mistake. This, none of these buildings are right. Liz, you said you saw it in a mirror, right? All right, I'm gonna start. Let's go. I'm gonna start taking off down to the other end of the dock. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> That's so clever, and I'm so mad. Uh, I, you know. All right, so you all gather yourself oh. up and head to the Ronin west side. Ronin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now that it's wasted time. running by Power. them, wasted yeah. time. Yelling, it was in a mirror. As soon as we see them running, I'm yeah. just booking it. The group of you all gathers together and goes booking off to the west. This isn't uh, suspicious at all. What ha Liz, God. what happened? Mirror. It's a mirror. Oh, no. I am a fool. I am an absolute fool. What do you think? We're do not all blame fools. It's okay. At least we're doing a full sweep. It's true. So all of you go racing off to the west. And the west end of the docks are, are very quiet. Um, that side had a couple, the east side and the center have a few bars, but when you get down to the west side of the docks, it's pretty quiet down there. There's mm -hmm. far fewer boats moored, and uh, the warehouses are all, uh, well, mostly dark. When you reach down toward the end of the, the rows of warehouses, you run, you kind of look at them, and, and Liz, you're now looking at it from the other side as if, like, trying to mirror the image in your head, and you look... And yeah, you're pretty sure you're right around the right spot. So it's a few warehouses again. It's, it's probably just two of them. The other ones are really small nearby here. Mm -hmm. And uh, you look back at, at the two of them and um, uh, one of them uh, is dark and, and quiet. The other one, uh, do you see through one of the windows some flickering light somewhere inside? And on the outside of the warehouse, it says LL Shipping. Oh, he's a nice How does he have so much established? Can someone, he's a can someone, an artist. can someone break open the door so we can Doing sneak this in? for a while? I, I, it is not my forte, but I can try. Is there I a have back door? What exactly finger. does that take? Yeah, what does it take to pick a lot? <laughs> well, if you don't have lock picks. It's Great. basically impossible. What about Anybody? bobby pins from a fancy updo? <laughs> yeah, that would count as improvised tools, but that is going to make it very, very difficult. You're talking about a thievery check with some pretty high difficulty. Mm. Um, so here's what you got. You've got a warehouse. You're currently looking at the front of it. The front of it has a pair of kind of large sliding doors, right? I mean, it's a warehouse, so they've mm. got to be able to get things in and out. Mm -hmm. So the front has these large sliding doors. Um, you, there are handles at those. You have not tried them yet. You're currently just looking at this place. That's it. Set into one of the doors, the big sliding doors, is a door, right? You know, inside, set into the door so you can open it, step over the lip, and, and go inside just through an ordinary door shape. Mm -hmm. That is the only entrance on this side of the building. You've not scoped anything out. You've not gone along any of the sides. That's what you see. Are the windows actually filled in with glass, or are they just open? Uh, looking up at the windows, yeah, they, know they have a glass in them. Damn. Maybe well, I mean, we could. Oh, to be I perfectly hope. honest, I am so tired of trying to sneak up on this guy. But what if he escapes us again? Yeah, we need to scope out the rest to see if there are any other exits. Yeah. Just and to not to risk traps. Do a full sweep around this building really fast to mm -hmm. see if there are any like hidden entrances, mm -hmm. any like, sweep. like wily ways that he could get out if mm -hmm. he were ever to be caught doing the dumb things that he does. Okay. Um, so you want to kind of scope out the building, mm -hmm. all right? Um, all right. So you, you're able to make your way around. What is your uh, stealth? Me. Bonus? Yeah, I just want to know. Um, it. it is plus fourteen. 
Okay. Um, so you make your way around the building. <laughs> what? It's fine. Uh, <laughs> no, this is all fine. You're fine. Um, you make your way around the building, and uh, <laughs> everyone blanches whenever I roll dice. Uh, uh, okay. you say it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Is it? Fair, fair. That's on me. Okay, so uh, you make your way uh, uh, around the building, and you notice that there is only one other entrance, and that is on one of the sides, um, kind of towards the back. There is another door leading in and out of this place. Mm. All of the windows are probably too high to climb into from the outside without, like, rope and grapple or something like that. Um, if... You know, because when you looked through the mirror into this place, the crates and stuff were piled pretty high. You could probably get out of a window from inside by crawling up on all the crates and breaking one out and getting out that way. But they don't look like windows that have, like, hinges or latches or anything. They don't look like windows that are designed to be open. They're they're just set in. And most of them are only, like, this tall. They're not they're not huge, like, I mean, big giant glass is really expensive, so. Mm -hmm. Um, Can I hoist them up and? (laughs) No, they're they're like, they're like over 10 feet above. uh, What I am curious about is what is the opening mechanism for this side door? Uh, It's just a handle with a lock, right? Any of you strong enough to yank open that door? Well, or make a lot of noise, but well, yes. I mm. would like to propose I'm something. Happy to try. What? Yes. That we do split up and cover the different exits. I just crazy? in case he runs, which he will. Sure. That is not a bad idea. <laughs> so, uh, y- breaking open doors in this game is totally a thing, okay. right? You mm-hmm. can you can you can just break the doors. You can either attack them with weapons or you can make an athletics check to just literally break the hinge or handle. Um, that you know, there's a there. It, it, it can be very difficult to do those sorts of things. What if so, Omelette and okay. I, um, both? Actually, mm-hmm. I have an idea. Well, maybe we what? should let. Do you remember that one time we wanted to knock down a certain door with a certain item and we didn't? What do you say we give it a try this time? I think it's been long enough. It's probably charged by now. <gasps> oh. Mm. Well, Ooh. we could do that and have another set of us at the other exit. Yes. In case he runs from the noise, and yes. then if that's, he comes out, that's, that's exact. So, yeah, like you hit the that. thing. One of us at the door, and one at one side and the other. So, in case he jumps out a window, mm-hmm. we can we just start screaming, and everyone knows which way to go. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. I'm saying that in a very hushed tone, by the way, not aggressively. Yes, loud. the ring of the ram can be used once per minute. Oh, it's been thirty that's minutes. Oh, it's been <laughs> plenty, plenty of time. Plenty of time. Yeah. So what do you say we uh, we smash down the door? I don't yes. care about yeah. disturbing any dead this time. I do love you using my ram. <laughs> <laughs> Positions. Is that now? Okay. Yep. Who's covering okay. what exits? I'll. T- I can jump pretty high. I'll take one of the window walls. Okay. 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 Uh, do you want to take? I guess I'll be at the side door. There's. There's the, wait, there's the front doors and then there's the back door. Right? Yeah, so the there's the door. front main door, which mm-hmm. is a two-part door that opens this way, yeah. but it also has a small, normal open mm-hmm. door set into it. Mm-hmm. Then you've got the side door, ordinary door. Mm-hmm. Both of the, all of these are wooden. Mm-hmm. They're just wooden doors. Yeah. Uh, the windows are all like about ten feet off the ground. Okay. I wonder what would be the so weakest there's only door. Two doors. The side door. I, they both look about kind of equally. Okay. Constructed. Neither one is like iron banded or anything like that. So they're both just kind of wooden doors. The front door is a bit predictable. Mm-hmm. I say go through the side. Make yep. noise out the back and, and then we'll drive them forward. The front. So I will take the front entrance. Go in the side with you. Sounds oh, great. Already going there. <laughs> All right, You're I'll done. take front with you. Okay. Uh, okay. So how are the folks opening up the side door versus the front door? <laughs> are we opening the front door or are we just seeing if he runs out of it? I think we're just seeing if he runs out yeah. of it. If he tries to run out, then we will stop him. But if it looks like they've got him full, well cornered, they can just shout for us and we will come mm. come back in. Through I'm the using the ring of the ram to oh, bust ah, open the door. Oh, that's true. Unless you want okay. to open yeah. the front door. Right. Actually, it might be better if you come with me so I have somebody strong. Just in case I need to open the front door. Okay. Switch me! Okay, and I can send a message if he breaks out the window. Perfect! There we go. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Movement happening? Mm-hmm. Okay. Ram charging. Uh, folks, <laughs> folks are all ready. Yeah, yeah. And uh, okay, Take so when ring. you're ready, yeah. um, you point, ready. you point the, uh, the ring of the oh, ram. 
I uh, know how much I need this. Uh, at the door. I'm, a, I'm going to go ahead and assume you throw all three charges into it. I'm throwing all two yeah, charges. Right. I'm going to go ahead and make a saving throw for the door. I'm shield and sword ready. I'm assuming everyone has weapons drawn. I can't imagine. Yeah. Yeah. I have to say it. I have to say it just in it's case. It's fine. No, no, no. I, I, I'm going to go ahead and assume everyone's ready for a fight. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the ram-shaped force slams into the door. The door splinters and cracks and kind of buckles in. Um, uh, go ahead and roll damage. I love that sound. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you? Oh, oh. No, not no, from you. Not from you. <laughs> not over there. Well, Fine. Only here. 19. That's going to be... 20, 20, 22, 24. 24. Um, the ram chase shaped force slams into the door. Um, a lot of its boards and whatnot break and buckle. Uh, the door is very heavily damaged, but didn't quite blow off its hinges or anything like that, but you did break a bunch of the boards and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, um, uh, yeah, you could kick it. Yeah, I mean, you can almost reach through one of the holes on the inside and try and, and, try and open it. Um, uh, at least you, you look at it and you think uh, that's what you might be able to do. Uh, but when that ram-shaped force slams into the door, uh, right above the lock, there's a glowing blue rune that suddenly appears. And the moment it appears, it unleashes a blast like a of spell. electricity out <laughs> of the door that slams right into you. What it, what's the spell? Oh, it's a lightning bolt. Oh, yeah. well. Mm. Yeah, not much. We should have checked my traps. <laughs> Can I have a reflex save, please? We never check yes. my traps. Oh no. Ooh. To be honest, even if we had recognized this, there's not much we could have done. Ah, I mean, Thirteen. On oh. oh, the reflex save? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, you take twenty-two points of electricity damage as the bolt of oh. lightning slams into you. Oh boy. Oof. Um. Now that didn't do a tremendous amount of damage. I mean, it's that's not nothing. Mm -hmm. um, and by the way, I assume you have your lay on hands back at this point. Yes. Okay. Uh, or rather your focus point. Um, but uh, the thing that that did that uh, is probably the, the, the larger problem is it was really loud. Mm. That was a crackling bolt of lightning that all of you heard from every side of the building. I'm gonna send a quick message uh, uh, to, I guess, Achilles. Are you okay? Is everything okay? It took a bit of a hit, but uh, it's, it's okay. The door's open. Um, no. Open-ish. I mean, you could reach in and open it if you want. Yeah. I'll do it. Lightning bolt hit okay. me. Uh, you reach in and fumble around with the lock mechanism for a second, and Can it I is latched. Can I detect magic before, <laughs> before I touch it? Uh, you, you ping detect magic, and, and it, 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 it has a faint glow that is fading. Okay. As if it just had a trap on it that dis okay. discharged. Yeah, yeah, open yeah, it now. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> or at least that's what you sense. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and you, you reach in, and you fumble around with the lock, and are able to pop it, and uh, the door is now open. Let's go in. Let's go in. I'm ready to fight. Ready we to enter. Stab him. Okay. Shield up. Sort of. All right. You uh, <laughs> take your first steps into the darkened warehouse. And I want to be clear. You, you have the light around you, but beyond that, it is a dark and foreboding place. Uh, beyond uh, in the area, you are looking into a maze of crates and barrels and just looking into the place. Right now, just from where you are standing, there's like three different directions you can go from just right here into this warehouse. And I want to be, I want to stress, this warehouse is like 60 feet wide by probably like 200, 250 feet long. So it's a big mm -hmm. place. Um, oh man, oh man, oh man. I want to listen for movement. Anything. Oh. What is your perception? 13. Um, you listen and somewhere out there, and but I, I have to admit, uh, it, it's very hard for you to tell. Um, you hear something like a, a bit of a, of a, like a scuffle or like a boot movement and maybe a cough, but it, it fades so fast you, you don't know where it came from. And this place is really kind of echoey, the, the, the way that all the boxes are and everything. It's kind of hard to be like, where did that come from? Now, the door that you just entered from is not at the back of the building. It's kind of on the side. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, but it is on one of the long sides. All right, okay. so uh, you've got maybe 100 foot of warehouse behind you, maybe 250 or 150 feet of warehouse on the other side, and you got about 60 feet deep. I'm going to set an alarm at the door. Is there a center aisle at all? 
Is there a center aisle at all? Not that you can see from where you're currently at. At the door, you've got kind of a passageway that snakes between some crates in front of you. Then you've got a passageway that goes past some barrels off to the right, and to your left, you've got something that just kind of hugs the wall and the free space right there for a bit before being blocked off by a bunch of crates and then goes inside. So, like, I mean, I, it's, it's like a maze. Mm -hmm. You're not sure where any of this leads. Mm. But you don't see anything that looks like a main she thoroughfare. I, d I mean, I don't know. I feel better if we're together. But I know. Mm. There's a chance no way to get back in touch with her. At least I, I put an alarm down so we'll know within if he comes within twenty feet of the door. Okay. At the very least. So there's just boxes everywhere. It crates, barrels, um, you know, coils of rope, things like that. I mean, like, it's it's kind of a mess in here. Um, this isn't exactly a well-put-together place. And, you know, now that you've stepped in here and acclimated a bit, you know, from, from being outside, you know, outside it smells like uh, the... the water, right? I mean, you're on, you're on rivers, but they're pretty big rivers. So, you know, the smell of water and fish and stuff like that. Um, in here, the, uh, there's almost like a weird sickly sweet odor in the air. Mm. Um, Does it smell familiar? Uh, yeah. I mean, it kind of smells like rot. Oh. I don't know if we should open up any of these crates. No. Does he I have an idea. So I have an idea. What if we we take like a, a something breakable or whatever that'll make a lot of noise, mm -hmm. and we just lob it as far as we can in one direction, send some noise down that way, and then go the other direction, make him think we're coming from one direction, so he'll go the other. Well, I, do you have anything? I um... no, but we can find something in a crate, maybe. Do you want to open up one of these? I crates? mean, no. is there anything? On and the... also, opening up the crates is noisy business. Mm -hmm. Opening up a crate is not something you do well, stealthily. Is, is there like a They're nailed bar? shut. Is there anything loose sitting somewhere? I have a short sword that I got from the guard. Oh yes! Do you want to just? He's gonna want that back. Um, all right. Uh, uh, he, can, he can come luck. get it. Yeah. Can, do you want to he has to pay the deposit on that. All right, as far um, as you can in one direction. Okay. That's our new big bad, the the soldier that, whose sword we see. <laughs> <Yeah>. Poor, <laughs> poor man. <laughs> yeah. He's four days from retirement. All right. Uh, <laughs> so uh, out at the front, uh, the two of you, uh, uh, Omelette, Liz, mm -hmm. the two of you are just kind of um, standing around waiting, and it is just quiet out here. There's nobody out, nobody around here. Gonna lay on hands on myself. Um, back in there, if you want to lay on hands How yourself, go right ahead. we enter? How long do we want to wait before we do? This is the question. Well, I'm, I don't know. I know how you like to operate. Yes, and that, you know, trying to hesitate now. You know what? Hmm. Actually, I don't know what we should do. <laughs> I'll be perfectly honest. I am beside myself. This has been, well, this has been a night. This has been a, a whole night. I will have to tell you about it later when we catch this son of a bitch. You okay? No, okay. Yeah, later, later. Um, but I think that the more distracted Lucky is, the more mistakes he might make. If he Good realizes point. that his entrances are cut off, then we will have him trapped. All right, and I, I sort of put my arm across her chest and move you out of the way of the door, mm -hmm. <laughs> knowing that the last one made a big noise, and poof. All right, so you start taking your <laughs> axe to the door. Yeah. All right, so. Make a noise. Let me, let me pan over. Uh, Linnaeus. Yes. Uh, the, you and, and Iculus mm -hmm. are inside when the two of you start hearing this loud racket coming from the, and I'm gonna call it the dock side of the warehouse, where the main door is. You start hearing that. Mm. Tariel, you're off on the other side, and you're in this kind of darkened alley between warehouses by yourself. Yeah, I'm, go I'm gonna send a little ping. And you, and you suddenly start hearing a racket out front now, <laughs> and you heard that blast of lightning uh, that boom of lightning from the other side. Uh, I'm gonna. Can I tell which direction the the cracking or the? Lightning? Oh yeah, you can definitely tell it's coming from the water side. Okay, then I'm gonna I'm gonna ping uh, Linnaeus. No, you're not there. I'm gonna ping uh, Liss. Yeah. What's what's that noise? What's happening? 
we are not necessarily trying to knock the door down, but we are definitely causing a ruckus to hopefully confuse Lucky. So taking an axe to the door means that you are opening that door the hard way. Um, that's <laughs> yeah. perfectly reasonable. It takes you... Um, I don't mind. This is more of a, we'll get in. If he's at the door, oops, I stab him. <laughs> and if not, make a lot of noise to make him uncomfortable so he makes a mistake. All right. Um, so you managed to uh, beat your way through the door. It takes four or five hits before you fully crack it open and are able to kind of make your way inside. Um, um, uh, just because, uh, you know, each hit has a bunch of damage taken off for hardness and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, you managed to beat your way through the door and, uh, now it's kind of this rough, broken opening, uh, into the warehouse. Um, Tariel, are you just staying where you're at or you're going out front to join? Uh, I might send another message since it is a cantrip. Yeah. I'm just going to keep asking questions. Do you, do you want me to come with you? Should I stay I, by the window? At this point, it's probably better if you join us. He's He gets out or he doesn't, but either way, at least at least we are all doing something act proactive. Leaving you out there alone is not a good idea. Yeah, it's really dark. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is very dark, and I don't <laughs> like it. All right, uh, so, um, <clears throat> Tario, you make your way back up to the front just as Omelette is... Uh, De finishing destroying the door, um, and I'll 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 come back to the three of you in just a moment. Over in the side entrance, the two of you have heard this loud, you know, cracking and beating at the door. What do you want to do about it, or what do you want to do in general? I don't coming from the side. Omelet. Well, it's coming from the front. Uh, yes, yeah. I don't I don't think that he would make that much noise. No, no, no. Uh, is it must there be omelet. Another set. And another um, sound anywhere. Well, can both of you give me a perception check? Eighteen. Fourteen. Jeez. Oh, mm, wow. Jeez. So you can hear a bit of like nice. whispered <laughs> racket, like. Um, the only thing you get out of that is that it's definitely more than one voice. Okay. Yes. But you have no idea where it is. Let's go in a little bit further and just keep our eyes out on either side of us. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to move in a little bit further into the dark. Okay, you got your uh, uh, route that goes kind of in deeper in the to the flame middle of the building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or you can go toward the front door or toward the back where there is no door. Well, they're in the front, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. maybe we move into the middle deeper, yes. deeper just to... Okay. See what's happening. Yes. All right. Um, so uh, you move in uh, a bit deeper to kind of back to back. See yes. what's happening. And, uh, and uh, the two of you are kind of uh, making your way into the darkened warehouse. You have to kind of sometimes duck beneath crates that are like, balanced on top of other crates, like making weird little tunnels through this place. It is a maze, a, 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 almost a warren of crates and barrels and boxes. And all of them are like stamped with LL shipping, um, you know, and they all have, some of them look like they've been here a long time. Like they have really yellowed shipping labels that are peeling off, um, you know, and, and it's just kind of a mess from all over the place in here. I want to do my, the thing that I can do with my sword and, and, and whisper to it and, give his sword some of the flame as well. Okay, if you use that, you won't be able to use it on anyone else. It'll just be the two of you. I know. Okay, so the Everflame does still have the ability to, to grant its flame to others, um, but what this does is it just uh, it just makes your sword uh, uh, a flaming sword for the time being. Amazing. I mean, that's not bad. <laughs> yeah. It's not like you're like, oh, well, yeah. get at that. Yeah, I don't want that. <laughs> Pitch that. Fire, <laughs> yeah. fire damage. Uh, all right, so uh, both of you now have uh, flaming blades. And yeah. uh, and you are making your way deeper into the warehouse. Yes. Back up cool. at the front door. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the two of you are in the like dead thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so at the front door, you 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 manage to break your way in and looking in into this darkened warehouse. Somewhere about halfway through, you can see flickering torchlight, mm. but you can just see it reflected off the ceiling. Is it obstructed? You can't see the actual flames at all. Because the crates are all piled up to like 10 feet high all over the place. We played ourselves. 
Wow. The villains were us all along. <laughs> uh, so, uh, y- but you're all still standing outside looking inside. Do you, what do you mean? Does, oh, that was, that was Aki. Oh. Uh, <laughs> does maybe one of us want to guard the exit? I, Maybe. Yeah, I don't think it is a good idea for us to leave an open exit for. Sure, I'll go in. All right. Yeah. I mean, we can we can all <laughs> go in since you. Was that the plan? We were well, all like... I can see better if I stay out here. If I go in there, I am useless without light. Sure, I can make light. But still, one of us needs to stay here. I don't mind staying here. There, there's not much light out here either, to be fair. I mean, there's like a few um, like lanterns on the docks and occasionally you get, the, you get the light. There's moonlight, which gives kind of dim illumination. And then there's the occasional kind of the, the lighthouse. It doesn't light up this area really because it's up high or anything, but it does, you know, kind of give some light to the area. Um, but yeah, you're not, it's not like you're in bright light out here either. But you are right. It's not the same as how dark it is in there. Do I you see the two see in the dark. flaming swords? You can't see any flaming swords at all. You can see okay. what looks like Just some sort of flaming light sure. somewhere in there, but you don't know what it is. I mean, you know that that Linnaeus has the Everflame, and mm-hmm. if she has it drawn, mm-hmm. it sheds light like a torch. So that may be what you're seeing, but you can't be sure because you can't actually see it. It's the Sunshine Squad. Okay. Sunshine Squad! Sunshine Squad! Um, so <laughs> They're back. <laughs> we were Ready always for here. Action. Yeah. We All right. never left. Never left. <laughs> Let's go in, flank the sides, and start a... flushing out our rat. All right. I will stay here, I guess. Should I make some light for us? Or would that be too distracting? I think we've already given ourselves away. Great. You did just bash in a door, so... Um, so um, let's, let's it make... It was really let's, noisy. Let's make less... Places you can hide. Uh, then I'll cast dancing lights above and in front of us. Great. All right. Let's go. All right, so you cast dancing lights and the, and the orbs begin floating around above you. And I'm let you step in yeah. through the door. Uh, you step in and uh, um, give me a perception check. Ooh. 27. 27. You spot it <laughs> just as your foot touches it. Oh no. And the only reason you saw it at all was because of the dancing orb of light that just bounced above your head and reflected off the incredibly thin wire okay. that is just inside the door about a foot off the ground. And your foot is currently touching it. Like, like you just touched it and we're like, oh. Step over. Get as far away from me as you can. Uh, I don't know if I've triggered it. Okay. So if I move, it might activate. She, you're pretty sure she can't get past you. You're like half in, half out of the door. You're like stepping through the door and that's when your foot landed on the wire and you were like, oh. Uh, okay, maybe then maybe I'll up. just back up. We'll back up and over to a side maybe. Okay, I'm going to do a one side Jump forward. <laughs> a one, what did you say, one thigh? It's sort of like, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I am going to, okay, so if I'm <laughs> stepping on the thing, I'm going to bend with all my might on one leg while, while not releasing tension in the other thigh. Okay. And then high jump, f- like tuck and roll forward out of whatever trap's about to happen to me. Give me an <laughs> acrobatics check okay. for this particular maneuver. Oh, there's a word right. for it. <sighs> 27. Now you stick the landing. Uh, so you. Uh, well, what does that mean? Well. You, uh, you, 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 you coil up and bound yeah. through the door. Um, you did not disturb the wire really at all. Okay. So whatever trap it is, you didn't set it off. But you look, now that you're inside and you look up using dark vision, because you can yes. see. And, and there, there's a globe of light, but it kind of followed Tariel. Um, 
looking up above the door, you see a pair of scythe blades <gasps> that are rigged to like fall and slam into anyone that's at that door. I'm just gonna step over it and then I'll send a quick message saying a, a quick message to Ikula saying, if you're gonna go out the front door, there is a trip wire, just be careful. Tariel sent a message saying that there's a trip wire. Oh. We must be careful. Okay. All right. I would like to start sneaking up to the candle area. <laughs> so the uh, the two of you, is it just the two of you? Yes. Somebody, is somebody standing at the front I'm door? Guarding, I'm guarding the front door. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, the I don't two, know if that's a good idea. The two of you are starting to make your way inside. You're entering. The front entrance of this place, by the way, is a little open, a little bit more open than the other parts that the others have experienced. At least the area right inside the door has plenty of space for like crates and wagons and stuff to be delivered. Um, there isn't anything taking up that space right now, but just after like 20 or 30 feet or so, there are rows and piles of crates and boxes and stuff. So, I mean, it, it, it goes back into the warehouse pretty quick. Mm. Um, so, uh, that is what uh, you are seeing from your angle. Meanwhile, in the back, the two of you are weaving your way through crates and boxes, and you soon find yourself in a small opening, not a large one, um, something that's like, you know, 15, 20 feet on a side, just kind of an open space where there might have been boxes at some point in time and they got removed. You're not seeing anything there that, you know, is uh, untoward or anything like that. It's not like there's, you know, any, any you know, uh, strange outlines or anything. It's just kind of an open space in the middle uh, where there are no crates. And uh, while the, uh, the the two people in the front are making their way in, and while the two people on the side are making their way in, and while this is holding out the front door, you are all kind of making your way in and that is the first moment where you see anyone else in this place at all. So back where uh, the two of you are, mm -hmm. uh, where uh, Iculus <laughs> and Linnaeus are, coming out of the shadows is a dock worker wearing just kind of coveralls. No, no, no shirt, but his coveralls, um, one side is kind of undone and he comes in and, uh, you notice that his mouth has been stitched shut. <gasps> his body is covered in scars and he has like two ritual knives in his hands and he's, and he just comes kind of boiling out of the darkness at you in the front. Two of these come out of the darkness making your way at you. And we're gonna roll for initiative and have everybody in combat, despite the fact that you're in separate groups. Oh, oh, wow. people. Are, do you, the, are the ritual knives the same as the one as the artist? Uh, they look oh, similar. They similar. Yeah, well, of... in that they're weird serrated blades. Okay. Yeah. But you said they were scarred too. Are they like similarly like? Oh, they do the look kind of similar in that regard. Not not the same. Not these the guys, same. These guys uh, just look like they've been hurt. Richard? And they look like they've been hurt a bunch. Oh, Question, no. do I count as being in stealth, given my current position? Yes, I will let you roll stealth if you I want. I mean, it's the same number, but I was just asking. Sure. But that does allow you to start yes. hidden if you roll it. Yes, so. I would like to do that. Me too. Um, this is fan, it's pitiful. This is the highest I've rolled. <laughs> really? But well, you're gonna take the first. It's, well, it's, it's still not great, but oh. it's the highest I've rolled. Probably better than me. Oh no. We're going to buy you a new D20 and we're Please. going to sage it and make <laughs> it happy. Uh, all right, so uh, what I'm going to do to make my initiative easy is I'm going to have two groups and I'll keep them in different columns. All right, so uh, <laughs> I love me running some complicated fights. Uh, <laughs> Tariel, what do you have? 29. 29, oh, wow. all right, you were at the front group, so I'll put you over uh, there. Uh, omelet. 21. There, uh, and Liz. 23. 23. Oh, 23. me too. All right, so that is those groups. Uh, Linnaeus. 23 as well. Okay, I will put you, uh, we'll put you after Liz. It doesn't really matter because you're in different fights. Yes. Um, so uh, we'll put you over there. They are probably faster than and you, by the way. <laughs> Iculus. 14. <laughs> Again. Our wonderful <laughs> champion. And his awful initiative. Awful. No, it is it is truly terrible. I All right. Cannot, I... uh, do you want to try this one? Uh, yeah, anything. Thank you. <laughs> any die, any it's die at all. All right. The... Yeah, not, so, not in there. How about on top of a hero point? Yeah. Top of the order, Tariel. 
Oh, um, well, I will inspire some courage. All right, and this is only going to affect your group. The other yes, group is just, way out of range. Just omelet, listen me, and then mirror image. <laughs> ah, you do that, and then you cast mirror image. All right, so there's now, what, four of you? Yes. All right. Um, so uh, the two of you in the center can hear a violin somewhere in the oh. distance, um, but it sounds like it's far away. Liz, you are hidden. Yes. Is uh, Do I have a, a clear shot at either of these, or do they seem to be fairly concealed from me in any way? Um, they would, I would say, until there's better light around them, they count as being just concealed. Uh, but they're not hidden. They're just, they're just concealed. Perfect. I am going to use my, I'm going to uh, mark one of them as my prey. I can... All right. And then I am actually going to use a feat that I don't often get to use because it hasn't really been all right. Uh, all that uh, I don't want to say useful, but uh, necessary. Applicable. Applicable. Correct. Yeah. Uh, and that is going to be my um, hunter's aim. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, which is I can make a ranged weapon strike against my hunted prey, and on this strike I get a plus two circumstance bonus to uh, an, uh, to ignore a prey's concealed condition. You uh, designate one as your target, and then you mm -hmm. take Hunter's Aim, yes. zero in on your target, Correct. and you may attack. So the first thing I need you to do is roll a flat check. Okay. And you do get a bonus on this. This is one of the few times you can get a bonus on the flat check, which is what the Hunter's Aim is giving you. Okay. To see whether or not you just miss outright. Mm -hmm. I would say that I do, because I only rolled an eight. An eight is good enough. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, it was it was only a uh, five flat check, oh, but, okay. but with your bonus, it brought it all the way down to a three, so you only would have oh. auto-missed on a one or a two. Great. So that's not bad. Um, so uh, you, you, you have the ability to shoot, so now go ahead and make the attack roll. Oh, that is much better. That is an 18 plus a 16. Well, that's definitely going to hit. Yes, is it the critical hit? 18 plus a 16, a 34. Yes. Oh, yeah, that, that's a critical <laughs> hit, yeah. Well, then here, let's have all of these fun dice come out to play. Hello, oh, no. hello. <laughs> Remember to uh, add up all of your uh, damage dice and double the total. I will do that. Let's see, that is a... Uh, With whatever other wow. static seven. bonuses you have, like... So seven times two is 14. Unfortunately, I didn't roll very high on my damage. Then there was my critical... Uh, D10, which is another seven, so that is a 21, and that thing is immobilized now. Uh, all right. Oh, sorry, add one more damage to that. Oh, Wait, inspire courage. 22. I'll actually add two because that doubles. Yes. All right. Um, so you deal uh, 23 points of damage to the, the first of these dock workers um, that come bolting out, and yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, the, pin one of them to one of the crates right next to him by his, his coveralls. Um, okay. Uh, That's all for me. That was Liss. Linnaeus, at the other fight. The I'm, two of you are only facing off against one of them. That we know of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said it for you so you didn't have to say it. No, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cast Forbidding Ward on Achilles. So you get a plus one to AC whenever that thing attacks you and any saving throws. Okay. And yeah, then um, cast... No, I'm going to move up to it and then shield. Is Forbidding Ward two actions? Oh, it is. Never mind. Oh. Then I'm just going to um, use Forbidding Ward and then shield. shield. <laughs> All right. So you use Forbidding Ward and then shield. All right. Uh, in the front, the dockhouse workers go. And uh, here's what's going to happen. The first one is going to try and break free uh, from the arrow that is pinning it to a crate. I yep, believe the DC that, is only a 10. Yeah. Not too hard. Um, he, but he does lose an action in doing so. So he struggles and rips his coveralls, and uh, they kind of fall open, and you see that he's been kind of... <sighs> At first, you thought maybe they're just maybe they're just scarred from lots of battles, but it's too much. It's just too much. Their bodies are just covered in scarification. Oh. It doesn't look like a pattern. It doesn't look like there's rhyme or reason to it. It just looks like pain for the sake of pain. Does it look like the the dwarf that we saw? Maybe a little. Um, just in intent. Maybe. Yeah. Mm. Um, the one from the rowboat. So. Um, he comes charging forward. That's his second action. Uh, and he has this kind of, uh, this, like, 
curved serrated dagger and uh, he's going to attempt to stab uh, well he's going to come after uh, uh, um, Tariel but which one of me? Well, oh. we'll figure that out in just a second. Here we go. <laughs> All right, so uh, I rolled a 19 uh, plus my bonus, so that's going to be a 34. That would be a critical against me if you hit me? Fair enough. Uh, you do have mirror image up and running, so I need to roll to determine if I hit you or one of the images. And there are three images, right? So there's yes, four of you total. One in four chance. All right, so I'm going to call, would you like you to be one or four? Um, I think it says uh, it, it's one on the one. One on the die. All right, so I did not hit you. I hit one of the images. Okay. So I destroyed it, but because it was a critical hit, I still do damage to you. Yeah, you do. Um, it's just going to be ordinary damage instead. Which is so here we come. That's all. Wow. Wow. That is going to be uh, 11 points of damage as That's its fine. serrated blade uh, dives deep into you. The other one uh, charges up to Omelet. That's one of its actions. For its second action, it's uh, going to... Uh, uh, it he kind of runs up to you, mm -hmm. uh, and as he does so, uh, you notice that he uh, like reaches down to the ground and just grabs like a bunch of dust and like like debris and stuff, and he just kind of chucks it at you. That's <laughs> one of his actions. It's just kind of a cloud of like dust and, and like warehouse warehouse like gross. Yeah, he just kind of throws <laughs> it at you, uh, and then. Uh, <laughs> After doing that, he's going to try and stab you while you're kind of like, ah. Activate my allergies, why don't you? <laughs> uh, armor class 30. That hits. All right, you now suddenly realize why he distracted you in that way. Um, oh, no. He did it so that he could. Uh, stab me? Uh, yeah, but stab you in kind of a more vulnerable spot. Your defenses were kind of thrown off by this. Um, and uh, he is going to do a grand total of 17 points of damage. Yes. As your arm goes up, he kind of slices both of them. And ah. he's, ah. or sorry, it's, he doesn't have a tongue now that I think about it. It's more like... Oh. Oh, God. Well, not that you can see. His mm -hmm. mouth is stitched shut. All right, uh, that was his turn. Omelet. Oh, that's me. Yes. Huh. Just, pfft, right? <laughs> spit all the dust that's in my mouth right back at him. Not as an action, just as a, my talking action. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, axe in hand. Yeah, yeah, you're, so, already, you're uh, already armed. Just, I'll swing at him. So you have uh, three actions, uh. Yeah. Raging or no? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the yeah. crap in your face. Yeah, that would be Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't even activate it. My, a couple of, <laughs> a couple of my, uh, my ancestors get angry for me. Like, don't you mess with our omelet. And <laughs> <we're around me." laughs> Cheap trick. <laughs> oh. <Ooh, yeah. laughs> Cheap trick indeed. Oh gosh, okay. 20, uh, 35. Uh, 35 is, is, That was with it, oh. yeah. Is, yeah, is definitely a crit. Oh. Great, 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 great. This poor <laughs> dock worker. Mm. You I cheat, mean, you get he's already He's already pretty poor. I mean, he's, he's got Ooh. mouth is so shut. He's covered in scars. Yeah. Doesn't look well. Ooh. Good damage. Mm hmm <laughs> Twenty-eight doubled. To fifty-six? Yeah. <gasps> Your axe blade slams into his chest, and you almost see him like... <sighs> and then you pull it out and blood oh, just no. runs down his chest. Uh, he's still up. Disgusting. I swing again, but I feel dirty. <laughs> <laughs> I roll for uncomfortable. Both yeah, I, I roll for I don't, I don't, I'm not here for that. Yeah. No, roll for doing it a non sexy way. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, oh. doesn't, it doesn't quite look like that. It just looks like the pain. He he liked it. Yup. Yeah. Yup. <laughs> <sighs> no thanks. Okay, okay. okay. 11. 
27? That's a hit. Okay. Oh, that is great. 15. Is that with the uh, bonus? That's six, no, 16. Um, your axe digs deep into him. He looks horribly, horribly injured, but he is still standing. He's now like, start, he's kind of stumbling about, but he looks, and he's got his blades in his hands, but he's still up. I don't like it. Mm. No, thank you. Uh, that's, is, it in, that's... is it in one of the like already wounded? Uh, he's just he's cut all over the place. I, oh. That was my third action. Oh, all right. I yeah. raged, oh, that's swung right. Rage, twice, yeah, yeah. All right. and that's foul. Just, just <laughs> bonusly uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> that is a bonus. All right, so uh, you're, you're at don't the make me participate. at the side door, the scarred. Worker attacks, and he charges up to Iculus. Uh-huh. Don't forget your ward. You have a plus one to your AC. And uh, as he as he moves up to you, um, you uh, he's been dragging behind him. It looks like he has a tattered bit of cloth, and he kind of throws it up at you to make you kind of bat it away, mm-hmm. and then he attacks you. Um, uh, armor class twenty eight hits. Uh, take uh, 16 points of damage as uh, as you are distracted by this uh, uh, bit of bit of cloth that he throws at you. Uh, he takes advantage of it and and stabs you in a vulnerable spot. But that's that's it. That's it for uh, his turn. Um, he's just going. Mm-hmm. Uh, Iculus, it is your turn. Retribution. Oh. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. He did just hit you. Yeah. All right. Here's hoping. Oh, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Here's hoping. Maybe I'll try with the left hand. This yeah. Time. Ah! <laughs> was it a bad I'm guy? assuming that you was a great back. roll. Oh, no. Mm. Oh, oh, gosh. No. I'm sorry. That's uh, 18. An 18 is not sufficient. You swing wide, and he kind of dodges off to one side, avoiding your, avoiding your strike. Try again. If at first you don't succeed. <laughs> Swing and kill again. Mm-hmm. Mm, a little better. Okay, so it's going to be a 28 minus 5. 23? 23. That'll hit. All right. Ooh. So he dodges to one side, but you reverse the blade and sink it deep into his arm. Okay, so it's going to be an 11. 11 points of damage. All right. Um, your uh, your blade. Um, oh, and is also on fire. Can you roll a d6? Oh, oh yes, you can do fire damage. Let's not forget. Let's not get the Let's not forget the ever flame. Oh, and he's not here. Oh, no. dang! Yeah. Get it. Just kidding. Don't look at it. <gasps> <gasps> Did you roll a six? Yeah. Oh! Max fire Max. damage. All right. Um, when the blade hits him, he kind of, and then the fire burns him. It's like, uh, and uh, he looks uh, badly hurt by that, but uh, he's still up in fighting. That was your second, second action. action. You still so have a third. Pleasant. Let's keep it going. We'll see if this actually does anything. All right. Okay, so it's a well, uh, sixteen plus a thirteen will be a twenty-nine minus ten, nineteen. Uh, uh, 19 is not going to be enough right now. Um, it's, it's, it's picking back up. Uh, yeah. We're going to move up to the top of the order and Tariel, you get to act. Great. Uh, keep up the Inspire Courage. Yep. And then um, I'd like to find an object to hurl at the mm. one that just... There's plenty of bits of <laughs> like broken bits of wood and stuff like that all over the place around Great. here. Great. I would love to throw a broken bit at him. Sure. With a twenty-one hit. Hit. Yeah. Oh, oh thank you. Huh? Uh, that will be eleven, fifteen points of sixteen points of damage. Sixteen. Nice. All right. I'm assuming this is the one that uh, uh, went charging up to you. Yes. Uh, all right, 16 points of damage. Uh, uh, smacks him uh, right in the gut, uh, but he is still up and fighting. At least he's not making any weird noises. There is that. <laughs> uh, Liss. Yes, I am. I am. Uh, have the dancing lights uh, continued? Is 
is is the creature still concealed? Can I see it now? The one that is fighting Tariel is in the the area of her of her dancing lights. So you can see that one cleanly. All right, hunted hunter hunted shot. All right, that is the one you fired at before as well. So Correct. Yeah. Ooh, that's awful. That's not going to hit. That's only um that's only a uh, uh, 19. No, I'm afraid not. Second shot? Yep. That's a natural 19 plus 11, that which is a 30. Definitely hits. Yeah. One. Oh, sorry, 32. Yep, that definitely hits. Not the critical? No. No. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Um, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 damage for that shot. Okay. And uh, then I'm going to shoot again. Okay, that is going to be uh, only a seven, 18, so that won't hit. No, an 18 won't hit. So you fired, uh, actually, you still have one more, actually. I do, yeah. um, but I'm trying to decide whether I should go in or stay out here. I feel as though I'm, I'm gonna stay out here and take one more shot. All right. Natural 20. Ooh. All right, well, let's do the math on that to make sure that it's uh, still a hit. Uh, not, it would be a 26. A 26, yeah, that's still gonna be a hit, so that's a, that's a crit, yep. That's a crit. He gets to be oh, it was a natural to the ground yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah. He gets to be pinned to the ground again, yay. Um, nice, uh, that would be 11 <laughs> times two. Uh, uh, sorry, not 11, it would be a 12 times two, which is a 24 plus five. Uh, so that is going to be 29. Yeah, he's pinned to the ground all right, permanently. Um, he, uh, that, that arrow sinks go. right through his neck, <laughs> knocks him back to the ground and sinks into the floor of the warehouse. Uh, you that is it Tariel alone. for that one. Linnaeus. Uh, I, I look to Aculus and I, I say, should I go in further? Should I find him before he escapes? Well, currently you have a crazed cultist warehouse worker fighting yes. you. I can handle it. Okay, I'm going to, um, is he blocking the entire path? No, he's just he just came from uh, like the direction opposite you out of the darkness. Okay. Uh, he's not blocking, uh, you could go, you could go back deep into the warehouse or you could go forward towards the front. I wanna go back into the warehouse. Inez, okay. be careful. I'll try, if you see a bunch of fire, maybe come and help. Mm. <laughs> it makes logical well, yes. sense. Yeah. If you see a bunch Probably. of fire, yeah. maybe come and help. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so uh, you begin stalking off into the warehouse, and I'm, I'm just gonna. I'll come back to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, to keep things moving. Remember your forbidding ward. All right. Oh yes. <laughs> At this, uh, the remaining uh, oh, heavily, sorry. heavily yes, wounded one up front. Uh, <laughs> the one that is up front that is very heavily wounded uh, goes now. And uh, it is fighting you, Omelet. Yes. And it, it, he spends an action pulling all the stitches in his mouth as he opens his mouth and just like ripping them all. Ugh. Just by like, bah! and just like his lips break and they're all bleeding <gasps> everywhere. I hate it. That's, all, that's what he does for his first action. It's his first action, and uh, he uh, he screams at you, Lord Longfinger, he'll 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 feast on you, and then he tries to stab you. What? Lord Longfinger. <laughs> Armor class twenty nine. That hits. Who is this necromantic fool that we're, tra we're trying to make? <laughs> Take twelve points of damage. Okay. He screams, he'll give you the blessed gift of pain! And attacks you again. Armor class 27. That is. Take 12 points of damage. I hate it. Yeah. I hate it so I'm much. I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> soul, you're enjoying this far too much. <laughs> it's your turn. I'm going to put this poor creature out of its misery. Okay. Lucky been eating his flesh. I'm just thinking as I <gasps> sink the next blow. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Thank you. Oh no. Mm. Better. Mm -hmm. Oh. 
35 again. Correct. Yay! <gasps> yay, yay! Could have been better. Mm -hmm. A lot better. Still raging? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So uh, 26 points of damage. 26 points of damage. Doubled. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. That's oh, that is doubled. doubled. Oh, wow. I only rolled a 13. Mm -hmm. I'm all right. Um, uh, still more than enough. He had only just a few hit points left. Oh. And uh, you take his head clean off. You just, yeah. He's screaming about the, the pain that, that that Lord Longfinger will show you. And you just take his head right off. Is the other one next to me, the one that's pinned to the ground? It's they're both dead. dead. Oh, they're both dead. I killed that mm -hmm. one. Yeah, they're both dead. And they think now is the time where I can, once we're out of initiative order, I'm going to step into the warehouse. Okay. Well, then perception check to see where Lucky is. If I see any more movement or things or traps or just what the heck. The three of you are up there at the front and the, that end of the warehouse has now grown very quiet. In the center, Iculus, you are still facing off against this oh. cultist. Do I not take my other actions? Is it? Uh, it doesn't, there aren't any more bad guys up near no. you. Um, so, I mean, yeah, technically you get more actions, but to keep things moving along, I'm yeah, just yeah. going to jump back to the, the other scene because it's the only place That's where fine. there's an active fight now. Um, so, uh, the cultist uh, is, is trying to uh, stab you. The first thing he's going to do is, like, grab at the crates nearby and kind of pull the top, like, loose one down at you and kind of toss it at you. Um, you can bat it away. It's not a problem, but he just was looking for the opening. And then he tries to stab at you. Armor class 25. Uh, that does not hit. Does not hit. No. my plus one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my dice back down. Uh, he, <laughs> I will put those back. He, uh, that, that, did, that did not do it. And then he's it. going to make his uh, third <sighs> attack, and that's not going to hit either. Mm. Um, so it is now back to you, and he's just... Mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think you're fighting? Oh. That's going to be a 23. That is a hit. All right. Ooh, 20. 20 damage. That was your first attack, and you, you hit him cleanly. Mm -hmm. Oof. <laughs> Is that your last one? Nope. All right. Why? <laughs> <laughs> no reason. <laughs> okay, better. Um, so 24 plus the one, uh, minus five, 19. 19. It's not going to hit. Not going to hit. Okay. You do still have a third action. Yeah. Gonna have to roll really high though if you want to hit. Yeah. You can do it. Uh, Shannon, I need you in this moment. Remember last season when I asked you for the net? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna ask you again for the net 20. Roll away. What do you got? Oh my god. Did you get a one? No. No. She didn't have 20? 20? No. So close. So 19. Oh, oh that's not 19's enough. probably going to hit, though. Yeah. I mean, what's your bonus? Uh, 13. So, or, so it's or, only or a that's 3? That's 20 plus 33. So 20, 23. 23 is a hit. Yeah, that's oh. going to hit. Yeah. Oh. That's great, though. Yeah. Shelly, you got this. All right. <laughs> All right uh, go ahead and roll damage. Came in on the clutch. Plus a d6. Yep. Fire. Okay, that's going to be a... 10. Just 10? Mm, rolled pretty poorly. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, you are, are slicing away at this, uh, at this, uh, this cultist, um, and, uh, and he is going to uh, return the favor. Um, he's kind of smiling as he's bleeding from, from multiple hits uh, and burn marks, and uh, he is going to uh, um, uh, swing at you. Uh, once with his uh, with his blade, that's going to be a twenty nine. So that's going to hit. Mm -hmm. um, so take uh, thirteen points of damage, mm -hmm. and then uh, that is like a bright red line of blood across your shoulder as he draws his wicked blade across you. He's going to swing again. Uh, that I'm not sure that's going to hit. That's only a twenty four. I nope. don't think that's enough to hit you. Uh, and with his third action, he's going to disengage. He moves back down the way that he came. Um, oh. Kind of goes trying to move off into the shadows. Oh, not the direction you went. You went 
uh, back deeper into the warehouse. He just goes back toward the other side. So I'd have to move. Well, yeah, he hasn't gone far. He just took one action to move. He's just moved off into the darkness. Okay. <laughs> Dude, you're going down. It's your action. Yeah. Yeah, so um, <laughs> The darkness doesn't avail him because okay. you have a burning sword. So you walk up to him and you can still see him. Okay. Um, but he did kind of walk off into the darkness and the shadows. And he's like, mm-hmm. He's mm-hmm. kind of mo- trying to move away. Um, you can take two actions. You have to spend one to move up to him. Okay. Um, that's what I'll do. All right. I just spend one to move up. Finish him off. Okay, it's going to be a twenty-seven. A twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight will hit. Great. Uh, twelve. Twelve. Yeah, twelve. Uh, all right. Uh, you. uh, Well, that's retribution too. Because he did hit me, right? No. Uh, yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so that's gonna be another two. All right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he'll take that. All right. Um, yeah. You, you, your blade slices into his back as he runs away, and he's like, Arr! but he's still trying to move. Okay. He's still up. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Um, eighteen plus thirteen is a what? Thirty-one minus ten, twenty-one. Hit. Or actually, thirty. Well, it hits 22. regardless. Hit. Hit. <laughs> Come on. Oh, um, it's going to be a 14. Just enough. Um, Your blade uh, catches him in the back as he's trying to flee, and he falls to the ground dead. Hmm. Thank you, Shellen. Thank you, Saren Ray. Have a nice evening. (laughs) Have a nice evening. (laughs) He'll try. Um, All right. So... um, The warehouse suddenly grows silent again. There was shouts and music coming from one end. There were screams and cries of pain. There was uh, the sound of battle. And now it's once again quiet. They had to have come from somewhere. There must be a place, an office, something. Mm -hmm. We should try and find it. Very likely there is an extra escape, a means of escape there if there is one. The Do I hear? You hear a shout off in the distance. So just so you know, that only lasts a minute. So oh, it's um, done. It, it, it's not done yet, but it's going to be done very soon. Okay. I'm going to start inching back in that direction, wave my sword so that he can see on the ceiling where the flame is, and so, crouch and listen. So you, um, Linnaeus, you turn around. Uh-huh. And... Uh, As you are about to go back the way you just came, there are walls of crates uh, kind of back that way into this darkened warehouse. And off in the distance, you know, none of the the paths in here are straight, right? They're all, there's always crates in the way and you you, you can't, you don't have clear sight lines anywhere. It's just, it's just, you know, kind of a maze of crates and barrels and boxes. And somewhere off, you know, you haven't gone far. You've maybe gone 30, 40 feet, but you had to kind of take a meandering path to the crates to get back to this, this other junction that you're mm-hmm. at. And you, you hear Iculus call out and you turn around to, to kind of head back that way, hoping to, to find your, your boon companion. And as you look back down the passageway that you just came out of into that darkness, there is a shadowy shape standing there. Achilles? It doesn't respond. I'm going to produce flame up towards the ceiling just so, as a beacon <laughs> so someone can see me. I did say look for I'm fire. Coming. <laughs> okay. Um, you, um, you uh, produce flame up to the scene. You hold the ever flame up and uh, unleash a, a small burst of flame up toward the ceiling. Uh, you see this. Um, those on the far end of the warehouse, you see some f- fire light reflected off the ceiling. It's so far and you're so kind of up next to the boxes, you don't get to see the ceiling very far down. So you can't actually see any of this, but you can see the reflected fire lights. And you could have sworn just a moment or her- ago you heard uh, Iculus call out Linnaeus. Uh, I'll, I'll take off that way. Back in that area, you let off this 
this flame and flies up to the ceiling and there it curls and, and fades away. And the light of the ever flame itself is kind of reaching out towards that shadowy passageway. Do I see? But it won't enter it. Oh, okay. What do you do? I cast light on my shield and I lift it. You cast light on your shield. And as you lift it toward that shadowy place, the light flickers and dies. Okay, I still have my shield up. And you caught some whisper of movement <sighs> in the darkness. Who are you? Answer me, please. Who are you? Do you hear an ancient, old-sounding voice? And it says to you, Come to me, my child. No. No, I'm taking steps back. And the darkness starts surging nope. forward nope. Nope. out of the crates. What do you do? Run. Run. Opposite direction. You just turn and bolt into the crates. Towards the door, waiting where I can go. That's you can't away. make your way back to the door. The door is away. Past. You can't away. Towards me. Another, another that gout of flame. That is the direction flame. it is. Oh. Another gout of flame, and I just start screaming. Run, 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 run! I'm just you running. Just, you just start bolting off into the crates. Yes. All right. <laughs> Iculus, you hear this kind of commotion happen near you. You don't hear any voice. You don't hear anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, but you do hear. You do hear Linnaeus kind of panic. You hear her kind of. Ah, ah, and uh, you, you see another uh, blast of, of flame fly up toward the ceiling and die away. Uh, and you hear, like, her footsteps go running off into the distance. What do you do? Linnaeus! You start calling out. Yes. And you're trying to follow in that direction. I'm trying to follow in the direction. Ever, okay. Is the ever flame still going? Or is the torch um, it's It's sword? starting to fade, Flicker. but it's not quite there yet. Yeah, you, you I can, can still see where I'm going. Yeah, you can for the, for the moment. Yeah, you've got, you've got another, you know, probably about... 30 seconds or so before it dies away. Okay. I mean, I don't know what's ahead, so. All right, you're, you're making your way up that way. Yeah. Let's go down to the other end of the warehouse. <laughs> uh, I really, I, yeah, I am, uh, I, since Omelet has bolted ahead, I think we should follow her. Um, but I am trying to do my best to like take in as much as I can mm -hmm. of the warehouse. I want to, I want to determine if there is a path I can I can see to an office or some sort of central location. Some place in this warehouse has to be like a place to actually conduct some sort of business. Fair. Um, so the um, three of you, are you sticking together or are you splitting up? Well, I had a question. Do we see the flames getting? No, you don't. You don't see the flames. You see flickering firelight reflected off the ceiling somewhere far away. And do we hear her panicking or anything? No, but you hear you hear Iculus call out Linnaeus more than once. Oh. Okay. And it is it. It's got to be near the other end of the warehouse, though. It is far away. Mm -hmm. Something has gone wrong. But if we just keep heading in that direction, we're eventually going to run into someone. But we should keep our eyes open as we do. Let's mm -hmm. just move quickly. Quite quickly. Activate my bracelet of dashing. I can move 50 feet now. Okay. One action. That will, that will help you, um, yeah. but really only if you are, uh, if you're kind of limited in speed by your companions if you're sticking with them. I would like to go ahead as I can see. Okay. So they have the lights and I don't need them. So the two um, of you then are, are sticking together as you make your way into the warehouse? I'm not deterring from the path though. I'm making it very clear where I'm going. Because okay. I don't want to get lost and I don't want them to get lost without me. Okay. Um, so you're making your way um, into this uh, warehouse. Now, are you both trying to take the same path? What I'm trying to ask are the two of you trying to follow Omelette or are you taking a different path? Because there's like three different paths from the entrance where you could go in, into these maze of crates. Uh, I mean, this is the least organized warehouse. I know. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> those I warehouse like workers should be fired. <laughs> we are at the point now where Omelette is best served trying to fight in some way. But our strength lies in uncovering some sort of 
So maybe we'll take a separate route. I'd still like to go yeah, in, in, in general the general direction. direction, but maybe not in the same path. All right, so the two of you are kind of going to pick a different <laughs> side path to travel down. Omnit Om Om is sort of, their head is moving independently of their body, and they're just watching you, making sure that you're okay and that you're going. And the moment they see you take a new path, it's just swirl, whoosh, and fast. Okay. All right. That's Omelet cool. goes <laughs> bolting off between the crates, making her way deeper and deeper into this place. The two of you go off on a uh, side and begin making your way into this place. Uh, the, 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 the groups are now trying to move through this warehouse, kind of going in every direction. Linnaeus, you're just panic running yep. right now. <laughs> yep. Aculus, you're trying to follow her, but it's amazing here. Mm -hmm. Your very own labyrinth. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks, I hate it. <laughs> uh, Liz and Toriel, yes. the two of you go wandering off um, through these crates and um, you are suddenly kind of overcome with this stench. It's a stench you've smelled before. It's the stench of old blood and rotting flesh. What, what, do do we I hear anything? Do we hear anything? Do we see anything with the dancing lights? No, the dancing lights are kind of bouncing around above you and between the crates and whatnot, but it's something up around the bend. It's, it's way too powerful to be, to be further away. Maybe we should slow down. Yeah. I think you are probably right, but we cannot turn back. No, but we will take a look around the corner. All right. You take a look around the corner, and in the area in front of you, there's a spot that's been uh, kind of cleared of crates. It's not huge. It's maybe 20 feet on a side. In this area, there is a drain on the floor, which is a good thing, mm -hmm. because suspended from the ceiling above, by its feet, is the body of a person um, that has been suspended by its feet and is hanging from the ceiling and uh, piled up uh, on one side uh, is a, a pile of like guards clothing um, maybe looks like uh, you see a lot of red and like the livery of like one of the guards of Canarate. Um, on the other side opposite that is an equally large pile of tan ribbons mm -mm. and it quickly becomes pe clear as you look at the body that it has been flayed oh. 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 who is lucky what kind of what kind of person does this sort of thing i don't know if he's entirely a person anymore he never showed this level of treachery while we were with him give me a Perception check. Uh -huh, uh -huh. We were only there f with him for a couple of days, and he would have proved his a sneaky bitch. It's <laughs> a terrible roll. Lots of different types. We're gonna oh, that's an even worse slippery. roll. I only rolled a twenty. Slimy. A what? A twenty. Twenty. Uh, uh, Thirteen. Okay. <laughs> Liz, you notice the body twitches. <laughs> Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Um, let us back. He may not be dead. Oh, God. Um, do we help him? What's, what's happening? What's going on? He's not dead. Oh, God. Are you still alive? Is there danger down there? Yeah. <laughs> there ain't evil in you, there. You, you, <laughs> there ain't evil in there. <laughs> you, you can't tell if he can hear you or not or anything. His ears have been removed. And oh, it, it, oh, 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 oh. Does he appear to be, he obviously is suffering. Oh, horribly. All right, I'm going to shoot him with an arrow and put him out of his suffering. There is no saving someone who's been flayed alive. I mean, at this point. You, you <laughs> knock back and almost have trouble looking at it as you let fly and it sinks into his chest. And you just hear, and it stops moving and gently swings. 
I am going to pay back inch for inch the pain this cursed halfling has caused to so many people. Well, now we have more proof of his wrongdoings. Indeed. Omelette. Yeah, okay. You are well, racing forward, making your way through this place. Yes. Oh my god. Um, and as I, I, I um, it, it's sort of just pulling me along um, um, instinctually. I'm sort of moving rapidly now um, because I, I'm evaluating the circumstance of being boxed in and, and lost, and that's just not advantageous at all uh, from, a, from a battle standpoint. No, it's not. And all this information is just, it's just flowing, and um, I look up what, how tall is the Tower of Crates? About 10 feet. That's it? Yeah. <gasps> What's the tallest tower around me that I can see? Uh, you know, it, it's are hard to tell. I mean, they're all about 10 feet. You know, it's a couple boxes stacked on top of each other. Some are maybe 12, some are maybe eight. You know, it, it, it ranges in that range. I'll go to the, the 12. The ceiling here is about 15 feet tall. So the, the you know, where that's where the rafters are for the ceiling. It's not really a ceiling. It's just the rafters of the, the roof. Um, and uh, uh, so, you know, uh, you could you could you could easily kind of get up there and and be up there. I mean, you could climb up there. You're not sure how steady some of these crates are. Some of them look. No, really I would old. like to jump and land. Okay. Um. Well, on like a short crate, you're not jumping up ten feet. That's too high. I can. Oh, you can. I can. <laughs> With. Uh, um, I reach into um, uh, my sort of leftover pouch area, All right. yeah. and my hand, um, uh, I, I haven't, just the, just the thought, Linnaeus, that's who's missing, and I remember my book, and I grab my emerald grasshopper, ah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I smack it onto my chest, and um, that's all I have to declare, and now I make a, a, a jump roll. All right. If I succeed, I can jump up to 50 feet, straight yep. up. Whoa. Yep. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Way more than you need to. You could actually probably put some distance in that, so too, if you want to So she ran, like, 50 bit, yeah. feet that fat, and now she's going <laughs> to... Yeah. fucking amazing. All right. Awesome. <laughs> so uh, you you yeah. activated it. It kind of loses yeah. cluster and crumbles, because I think it's just a talisman, You're right? basically just... I have no talisman. idea. <laughs> yeah, I think it is. And, and in fact, I think it might have already been attached to your armor, so it wasn't in your pouch. I think you have have it attached to your armor, but that's fine. Um, you would have had it there. Yeah, I would have. And I think it's the only talisman you have. So uh, you uh, you 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 uh, call upon its power, and it, it kind of crumbles away, and you're able to jump up onto the crates. Um, give me an acrobatics check just to give me a sense of, of how well you uh, jump and, and how well you land on top of these crates. Uh, 24. 24. And you have athletics too, don't you? I do. 14. Yeah, give me give me a check of that as well. Okay. Just trying to get a, a good sense of how you how you jump and how you land. Nineteen. Okay. So you go leaping up on top of this crate structure, um, and uh, uh, you get up there, and now you're you kind of land up on these things, and the crate that you land on happens to be able to hold you, mm. but it's not super steady. Like one of the crates below might be empty or damaged or something, okay. and the whole thing's a little crouch low edge. to. Center yeah. my gravity. Far uh, uh, up ahead, and and it's hard to say, but there's some sort of flickering firelight that you see from uh, one or possibly two uh, uh, light sources up there. They don't seem together, um, and uh, uh, but you're not quite sure where they are, and they are still like over a hundred feet away from you. They're they're you know kind of a ways away. Uh, between you and there, there's all these kind of loose. Uh, crates and boxes and stuff. You could kind of make your way up here. It might be a little faster, uh, but it's definitely a little bit more treacherous uh, because if something gives, you will be tossed down onto the ground below. It's okay. Used to falling. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so you continue moving forward up here? Yeah. I All start right. just leaping across the towers of <laughs> All right. crates. You go leaping across. Um, you travel uh, uh, a little bit. Give me a give me an acrobatics check so I can check your balance. Mm. Twenty two. All right, that's good enough. Um, not by much. You, there's a few spots yeah. where you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. and um, 
you go, you make, you make some good distance and you find an area and, and I only noted it because you, you wouldn't probably seen it otherwise, mm -hmm. but there's an area where there's a, there's a hole in the crates and boxes. Mm. Um, but there's no way, it doesn't look like there's any obvious way in. It's just a void in where the crates were placed and stuff. Uh, in the bottom there sitting on the floor, there is a, uh, crate and on top of this crate laying on a cloth. And uh, you're, you're looking at your dark vision, it looks like red or something. Mm -hmm. uh, it, there's this like cloth laid over it like a drape. And laying atop this cloth is an axe. Like a big, uh, 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 heavy looking axe with like a black iron head. <laughs> you can easily climb down. Give me, give me an athletics <laughs> check to climb down in there. Uh, you could also just jump. To be honest, I mean, I'm it's only you're only about ten feet up. I imagine I would just jump. All right, yeah. Go, go ahead and give me an athletics check just to <laughs> land die. safely. Ooh. Yeah. It's not a hard check, so. Yeah. Twenty something. Eight, nine, ten, uh, eleven. Thirty-one. Oh yeah, no, you're fine. You land, like, you stick the landing, and you're like, <laughs> uh, bow. I, my my <laughs> eyes go wide as my body leaps forward, does a flip, and lands all majestic. And so there is this axe, and it looks like it has a a handle made of dark wood. Dark wood is a special kind of wood. It's very rare and uh, very hard. It's very, very solid. That's what the handle is made out of. And the top looks like um, the blade looks like it's carved out of one piece of solid wrought iron. Uh, it's very jagged and rough. Uh, and it's just kind of this crescent shape. And the end of the crescent is just drove straight through the handle. Uh, that's how it's connected. So it's, it, it almost looks like some sort of executioner's blade. But it is a big, mighty axe. Oh, is it? Is it like crudely made? No, it doesn't look crudely made. It looks crude is the wrong word. Okay. The word I would describe it as is it looks incredibly, like intentionally made to look kind Spooky. of rough and lethal. Ooh. Okay. But, but looking at it, you're like, that's not because it was made poorly. Yeah. They made it to look that way. Her arms immediately outstretch to grab it as her mind thinks, hopes it's not cursed, <laughs> and grab it. Okay. You pick up the blade. Yep. The moment you, or the, the ax, yeah. you pick it up and, and heft it onto your shoulder and it, it has, it is heavy, it is, it is, heavier than the, the ax that you currently wield by a few pounds. Yeah. Um, the head of this ax is very, very solid, very dense. And uh, you can kind of feel it, and as you're holding it, it kind of thrums. It thrums? Yeah, there's like a, it's like when you touch something that has a very low current in it, yeah. and the moment you do, you're like, hmm. Oh. But, but the, now that you're touching it, it's fine. But there's just a moment where um, you, you, you're touching it and, and that current flows through you and, and your head kind of swims a little bit, but it, it fades away. I instinctively just put the blade up to the ear because if it's vibrating, maybe it's making a sound. You don't hear anything? I'm going to count that as I was chosen or something. <laughs> Now let's help Linnaeus. I just want to whack my way out of the, <laughs> let's give her a go. Um, you <laughs> slam this ax into the nearby crates and they just disintegrate under the blow of this thing. The metal of the head of this thing looks not like ordinary metal. It slices through these crates as if they were butter. That's so cool. That's awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Happy birthday to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you take the ax and begin making your way through the warehouse. Uh, up in the other end, Linnaeus. Yep. You are running about through this place, <laughs> kind of in a panic. And you look over your shoulder <laughs> on occasion, and you, it's hard to tell. Is the darkness still following you, or is it just dark back there? You don't know. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to slow, just infinitesimally turn around and, and say, if you don't stop following me, I'm going to be forced to hurt you. You turn around and say that. 
and the darkness that is still surging after you suddenly just breaks apart. It's just like it just stops. And that same old voice. Not your child. And then it fades away. Ugh. And the darkness is gone and you're standing back in the warehouse. What? Why? I just sit down and I start rocking back and forth. I don't know where to go. I'm already lost. And this thing, I don't know where it went. <laughs> I don't know where my friends are. I'm just going to sit here and rock back and forth. Iculus. You are making your way forward trying to find Linnaeus. You turn left, you turn right, you're making your way through this maze, this cavernous maze of crates, barrels, this warehouse, this darkened realm. The light of the Everflame is still burning in your blade. And you make your way to an area and you're, 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 you're not sure where Linnaeus is. You're not sure if you've followed her correctly or not. You're just kind of going. And you were trying to listen to her voice and her cries, but th this place is a cavern and mm -hmm. they echo off the ceiling and you're not sure where it is. And you're heading back that way, but you just don't know where it is that you should be going. Do you have survival? Uh, no. Okay. Um, you go wandering for a bit and you make your way down one passageway and Behind you, a bunch of the crates and barrels fall over. <laughs> and I mean, th at the pace you're moving, you keep yeah. brushing into them and bumping them, right? I mean, it's a, these these aren't exactly you know OSHA standard yeah. passageways. <laughs> this, this, yeah. this place is not exactly safe, so you're yeah. bumping into things, and you've jostled barrels and stuff before and knocked over little yeah. things. So th this may just be that you knock that over, but you're not sure. Keep pressing. All right, you continue to move forward and um, you uh, walk into a, a long kind of open area. You're kind of alongside one of the walls. Um, you know, the, the path that you took kind of s snaked around and you're pretty sure you're against the wall, the long wall opposite the entrance or sorry, the side entrance that you came in through, mm -hmm. right? So there's the two long walls. You came in through one of them. You're now in the mm -hmm. other. And you're making your way uh, down this thing, and you suddenly realize that you're in this kind of long space. And hanging on the wall are, uh, on the wall on the outside of the building, are a bunch of framed paintings. Um, do I recognize any of them? Uh, you walk up to the first one, and the first one um, shows a... Um, what looks to be a, a painter. It's a painting of a painter who is, uh, whose arm is draped up over his canvas and his canvas is splash red with his own blood. And protruding from his back is a dagger. Um, wow, that's... I don't know if I've ever seen anything like that. Um, There's more. That's the first painting. What's next? You go to the next painting. The next painting uh, is uh, the, uh, a painting of a, of a stage and a bar. And uh, there is a uh, minstrel on the stage. And the minstrel has this smile on his face as he's holding his lute. And he's got this crazed smile, but his throat has been cut and blood is pouring down him. And there is only this kind of shadowy blur behind him holding a dagger. What is that? There you see an old man above a book. He has a quill in his hand and, a, and he's doing an illustration in the book. And, uh, but he is laying back in his chair because there's a blade driven through his chest and he's just there quietly and uh, on it goes. There's like almost a dozen of these. Artists, painters, musicians, all sorts of people, all dead, all killed by a dagger. And that dagger 
looks similar. It's not the same dagger in each painting. After a while, you start to notice a theme that they're all killed by a dagger. Mm -hmm. And all of these daggers um, are different types of handles. They have different types of blades. Some are silver, some are black metal, some are whatever. The only thing they all share in common is at the end of each one of them, at the pommel, they have something that in your head just you're like, why do I know that? What What is that? And it looks like a link of chain attached to the pommel. So, it, you know, you've got the pommel of the blade and the blade just, the pommel has this little hook on it. And on the end of it is just a link of chain. Just one. And you go down these things and you get to the very last one. And it's a painting of your father. The blade sticking out of his chest. And that's when you hear the voice. Do you like my handiwork? And come leaping off of the top of a crate is Lucky, one of these blades in hand. And he comes diving down at you. Can you roll initiative for me, please? Oh my God. Get him. Get him. And in fact, can I get everyone to roll initiative? Because this oh is going to make one hell of a ruckus here in just half a second. Good. So uh, everyone oh. can respond. Are we all starting from hiding? It, 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 you're all technically hidden. It doesn't matter whether or not you roll that for initiative or not, oh. uh, because you're not in the fight right now. But I want your initiative just so that I know what you're doing. And based on positioning, I'll let you know when, how, many, how much time it'll take you to get there, because you're going to have to race to the area. Oh, oh, wait. Okay, hold on. Let me roll. Just in case. You can take it. Make sure you wait in back. Mm. Oh, sorry. Here it is. He's a little bitch. <laughs> Tariel, what do you have? 26. Liz, what do you have? How many flavors of ice cream are there again? 21. 31, my dear. 31. Oh. <laughs> I guess I don't know my ice cream. Uh, Linnaeus. 30. 30. For once, I'm fast. Omelette. 34. Wow. Holy dang. Iculus. Iculus. I'm taken back by the painting of my father, which caused me to roll a 15. Uh, there we go. Our lovely champion. All right. So here's how this is going to work. Linnaeus, uh, you are the closest. Okay. So I'm going to put you at what I'm calling a, a one round delay. Okay. You will spend one whole round just trying to find him. But that is only once the noise is made. So it might be more than one round, but it's it's going to take you at least one round to get there. Okay. Um, Tariel and Liss, the two of you are, uh, let's see, you are like two whole rounds uh, away. Okay. Uh, omelet. Yeah. Um, you are also two rounds away, but you're moving very fast. And if you take certain methods that can maximize that, because it's hard to move that fast when you're in a warehouse like this, but if you crawl back on top of the crates, you'll be there a lot faster. Can do. Your call. I will. Mm -hmm. I will. And Iculus, you're already there. So I have everyone kind of set up in ways that I can track this really easily. Okay. First round. Lucky goes. He dives off the crates. Dagger soaring through the air. You can see its silver blade. And he attempts to stab you with it. Armor class 32. It's a hit? Yeah. Not a crit. Not a crit. That's good. There's that. There's that. <laughs> Don't like it. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a lot of sneak attack. Oh, freaking rogues. Uh, I get stabilized okay. ready just in case. Uh, take 19 points of damage. So and give me a fortitude save from the poison. <laughs> oh. Ooh. And I should also note that in two rounds, the uh, light from your sword will fade away and you will be in darkness. 
Well, I just rolled a nat 20. Yeah. Okay. So I don't have to worry about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, he, he spent two actions to dive off the crate and try and stab you. Uh, he then lands on the ground um, very nimbly next to you. Um, so he like does a land, and then he tries to stab up at you with the dagger again. And it's probably still going to be a hit. 26? That's a hit. Only um, against the other enemy. What? By one. <laughs> okay, okay. And you are flat-footed to him still right at the moment because you haven't gone yet. So he's going to deal sneak attack again. Uh, that's going to do another 16 points of damage. Okay. It's all right. Uh, the poison has already hit you. He hadn't had a chance to reapply, so that will be the end of his turn. And he was like, he looks at you, do you like my work? You've been corrupted by Zonkuthon. <laughs> your father screamed so beautifully when I killed him. Mm. Nope. Iculus, it is your turn. Nope, nope. Kill nope, nope. the shit out of this guy. Oh my god. <sighs> Shannon, you know what this means to me. <laughs> I have been searching for years for this. I find him. I need you today. Yeah, yeah. Get on with it, prayer boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you to meet your dad soon enough. I mean, maybe. Huh. So that's going to be a... We'll see. And he kind of ticks at the, the loose chain link on the bottom of his dagger. Uh, 22. 22? No. He dodges way out of the way of that. Oh, way out of the way. What do you mean? Okay. Uh -huh. Try again. He's like, really? That? <laughs> That's what you got? We're, we're, we're. <laughs> Come on. Uh, nope. You swing at him again, wildly. Um, that is uh, that is your second action. You still have one left. Um. I don't have to use, uh, I might just have to ring of the ram. Can I do that with the- It's been I, a minute. Yeah. Yeah, you could ring of the ram again, yeah. but it would only be one action that wouldn't really do very much. At least and then fun. you wouldn't be able to use it again. Uh, but that might push him back five feet from that just That's what I need. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, you spend one charge and hit him with the ring of the ram. Uh, go ahead and roll the damage. I'm going to roll his saving throw. It's, it's just 2d6. Yeah, it's okay. It's going to be a 14. Okay. Um, he is, uh, yeah, he's going to fail that. He'll take the damage. Um, you deal a little bit of damage to him. You Wait, how much? 14. Off 2d6? Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. I'm not adding the bonus. No, 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 okay. no. It's just 2d6. 10. 10. 10. All right. I was like, wait, how did you get 14 on 2d6? <laughs> I thought I, I was really Don't worry about see, it. I really need to see your dice. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah just, just uh, some extra luck. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, so uh, your uh, your uh, your force hits him and knocks him back five feet, and he just kind of looks at you with a thin little ribbon of blood that comes down his face, and he's like, <laughs> "Oh, that's that's cute." Um, and that noise of him ramming into it uh, gives you all warning. So now, when it comes to your turn, I will tick you down a full round as you make your way there. So that's the bottom of the order. We start at the top. Omelet. Crawling up the crates, getting there faster. Okay, give me a uh, athletics check and follow that up with an acrobatics okay. check. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Twenty for athletics. Okay. Ooh. Mm, good. This is the key one. Mm. If you fail this, you end up falling on the ground. Thirty. Lose time. All right, so uh, you like hop up to the top and are bounding across crates. Um, you are not there right now, but you are now close to the point where you are hearing this commotion. You can see the flame uh, and uh, you can hear uh, uh, Iculus fighting. Um, you're drawing near, but you're not there yet. Next round, you might only have like one yeah. action. All my to actions get there. are going, dashing straight to him. Uh, Liss, you are making your way there. Yep. Do you hear that? Yeah. Let's go, Mana Moore. Wee. Uh, you go bolt in there. <laughs> Linnaeus <laughs> comes to you. Um, you pick yourself up. Mm -hmm. As soon as I hear combat, my first thought is Iculus because he was closest. So I'm running as fast as I can and I am prepared to unleash a spell 
as soon as I am within line of sight of Lucky. So you spend all three of your actions dodging through the crates, and just as you reach the end of your turn, because you've moved a whole bunch, you get to a point where you're looking uh, down into this gallery, and you see Lucky and Aculus facing off against each other, but your turn is over. But how far away, just so I know? Uh, they're about halfway up the gallery, so they're about 30 feet away. Okay, so he would have light now, because my sword is here. Just barely, he's okay. just barely in the edge of it. Just yeah. making sure. <laughs> Lucky goes. His uh, uh, first action is going to be to, uh, oh yeah, he's going to uh, uh, quick draw another dagger, uh, and uh, he will uh, try he and five strike feet? with that. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, actually, so yeah, he has to five foot up to you. Uh, he will quick draw another dagger and try and stab you with it. Uh, armor class 25. That's not a great roll. I mean, I guess it hit. It, it, it is. The 25 same. dead on. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, this dagger is not as good as the other dagger, so it's just going to do, uh, that is just going to do, uh, let's see, six points of damage. Mere flesh wound. Give me a fortitude save. <laughs> okay. The other dagger was poisoned. <laughs> 18. Okay. Uh, 18, you said. Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. The dagger cuts through you, and as it does, this burning pain rises up your arm. It's agonizing. Take 10 points of damage. Poison damage. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah, that one's really going to sting, by the way. <laughs> It'll leave you with a really nice scar, though. Not that you'll be around to form one. And then he tries to stab you again. Hmm. Ooh. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Mm -mm. Ooh. That's mm -mm. spicy. Mm -mm. Uh, no. That is a 33, which I think is just short of being a crit. Mm -hmm. No more yeah. spice from you. No more spice. Spicy. Only Too mayo. Spicy. Only mayo, no spice. Very spicy. No. Uh, that is going to be a uh, 11. How hurt are you looking? I'm pretty hurt. Oh, okay. But, you know, I'm still standing. <laughs> We're coming. We're Readjusting coming. my We're pillow coming. in a mm -hmm. He's looking at you and he's like, you know, I knew I should have taken the opportunity to kill you back then when it was just the, the group of you, but there were so many people around and I really didn't want to blow my cover. But here we are, so I guess I'll just take you now. <laughs> Isn't that great? It's like saved. It's like a little treat. I saved for myself later. Um, you think you're going to kill me. Tariel, you spend your round racing forward as quickly as you can, I'm assuming. How, how far away are we? Far enough that if you try and bardic music before you're within range, it's not going to help. Okay, then I'm just going right. to run. You spend all of this oh. round moving forward, yeah. um, but you're not quite there yet. Uh, we are now at the bottom of the order. Iculus. Smite evil unlucky. Okay. Uh, so that's going to give you some bonus damage on all of your hits this round. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not going to worry about lay on hands yet, because I still need the two actions. Okay. Because um, Smite Evil is going to be the one action, right? Smite Evil is one action, doesn't give you an attack, just gives you bonus damage. Okay. Yeah. Oh, God. What's happening? <laughs> um, so it's, yeah, 19. It's not going to hit. Uh, 19, yeah, you swing wide, but your blade does not manage to connect. <laughs> Lucky's yeah, like, what wow, it? if I knew you were this inept, I'm not even sure I would have bothered. Maybe I wouldn't even bother killing you. It's maybe not even worth my time. Would you shut up? <laughs> He's like, nah. <laughs> I hate this guy. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. is testing you. <laughs> Stay strong. Oh, no. <clears throat> mm. Yeah, Shellen. Yeah, I bet you she's testing you all right. <laughs> uh, yeah, you'll never get to meet her. Oh, jeez. Top of the order. Omelette. Yeah. You can spend one action. Give me another uh, acrobatics check, please. We're going to kill this guy so hard. Mm. 18. 18. Uh, so you go bolting forward and 
reach the area where this everything seems to be converging. All the noise is now coming mm -hmm. from one area. All the lights yeah. now over in one area. You're you're bolting straight toward it, and you you get right up to the edge of the area, and you see Iculus and Lucky facing off one on one. And just as you get there, your foot catches the edge. The whole crate and that whole wall of it tumbles down, and you fall into the area that they are in. You will take five points of damage from the fall. Okay. Um, and you are in there, but you are also prone, and that was your first action. Well, I do have cat, like, I, I have cat fall, mm. um, which uh, I treat all falls 25 feet shorter than they actually are. Oh, then you take no damage. Ha <laughs> ha! And as it turns out, when you don't take any damage from a fall, you can also land on your feet. I land on my feet! So you come in and I just kind of... And the smoke scoops me back the correct way. <laughs> you kind of ride the the crushing, breaking uh, barrels and crates down to the ground and end up kind of falling into the space um, and kind of stumble around in there. But you've you've landed. Yes. You're about thirty feet away from Lucky and Iculus. That was one oh. action. Okay. And uh, sudden charge. Okay. Straight at Lucky. All right. Uh, you charge right up, and uh, what, do you have that new axe in your hand? Yes, I do. You using that? Yes. Okay. I don't know what those stats are. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and roll me an attack roll. Right now, just treat the attack bonus like your current axe. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Omelette, I need ya. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Better. Uh, 31. Uh, that is going to hit. Oh. Your axe blade sinks into Lucky and he cries out. He's like, ah! <laughs> where, the, where the hell did you come from? Uh, go ahead and roll uh, 2d12. 2d12 still, okay. Yep. Uh, yeah, you're going to treat this like your current axe in most ways for the time being. I'll 21. let you know if anything else changes. So 21 points of damage. Oh, you have to do it, do it. The axe yeah. sinks into his shoulder and he, he cries out and he's like, ah, ha, ha, ha. hey, that's mine. Oh, no. <laughs> as, he, as he sees the axe buried into him. Oh, I mean, thanks for giving it back. I'll kill you next. Just wait your turn. It won't be yours if you are dead. <laughs> oh, uh, big words. Uh, Many words. So uh, that is omelet's turn Liz, you're still around away running 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 running, right. running running at the end of this round you come bolting into the area you come around the crates and you see this fight unfurling in front of you but you're out of actions that's fine i'm ready linnaeus within 30 feet you say yep do you know what time it is i i don't Searing light time. Oh, it's searing light time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Time to set him on fire with an 18. Uh, Plus 12. So 30. That'll hit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to set you on fire. I need two D6s, please. Um, and I don't know, but if he's a fiend, he's going to take more damage. He is not a fiend. Okay, well, he's still going to take some fire damage from my holy fire. 10, 12, 3, 1, 2, 3. 21 fire damage, please and thank you. And my last action is going to be getting as close as possible with 25 speed to Iculus. I want to be uh, as close as possible. Okay, um, you can be, yeah, you're adjacent. Yep. So now it's Lucky and then the three of you. Mm -hmm. ha. Is there a way I could have flanked him, just so I know? Oh, is Lucky already very much flanked? Um. So, um, yeah, you can run around, you can be on sides flanking him, um, but you quickly come to realize he is incredibly dexterous and able to defend and fend off your attacks no matter what side of you you are on. You're not skilled enough to flank him. I'll just be Whoa. close to Iculus. Wow. Uh, just to make it simple, you quickly come to realize that he is not falling for any of those don't, tricks. I don't like that, so I'm just going to be ready. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Oh my God. Oh, Lucky goes. He uh, he holds out the blade and he's like, 
<laughs> well, if we're here, and he spins around with his daggers dancing out, and he stabs <laughs> at all three of you. Okay. Ooh. Uh, all, all right. Well, fancy boy. Uh, the first attack, and I'll start with you, Omelette, Great. is going to be a 31. Hits. Oh, that is going to do 14 points of damage. Okay. Liberating step work with his dexterity. Yeah, liberating step will work. All right. How much? Uh, that's it. take eight off, so six points of damage. Ha! Ah! Yeah, so you take six less. You can take a step if you want, but it, it, unless you're moving away, it's not really gonna do make any difference. His turn's now, it doesn't matter. All right. Uh, uh, then uh, Iculus, he tries to stab out at you. That is going to be a 29, so that's going to hit. Uh, for, uh, let's see, that is, uh, uh, that is 12 points of damage. No, sorry, 11. And last but not least, Linux. Yes. Natural 20, that's going Whoa. to be a critical oh, sure. hit. I, oh, I suppose God. that Lip. will hit me. Ouch. <laughs> Let me just prepare to uh, take that HP down by a significant amount. Take 24 points of damage. Okay. And give me a fortitude save because it crit you. Fortitude. You've got two hero points. <sighs> yeah, take that. There you go. Merry Christmas. Okay. Happy Kwanzaa. Oh. <laughs> Same number. Rude. It's a 16. Ugh. Well, at least it wasn't a critical fail. Yes. So you're not dead. Okay. <gasps> cool. What, what happens? Why are you being in contact with me? Uh, instead, you are stunned. <laughs> he, I'm he stunned. Did. Yeah. He, stunned. he just dealt a horrible wound to you. He stabbed you right in the gut with this dagger, twisted it, and you just felt all of your insides move around in ways that are not okay. Oh. And uh, he's like, ho, oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho, And he kind of, for a moment, he's like, oh, yeah, look at that. Uh, and pulls it out, and blood is just pouring out of you. Oh, okay. I hate him so what much. What does stunned mean for me? Oh, you're going to lose your next turn. Okay. Tariel. Running. Uh, you run into the space, and that's going to be the end of your turn. I will allow you to stop further out at the edge of the space and yes. not and be like fifty feet away uh, and cast. Yes. You have one action left. All right. Inspire courage <laughs> with it. my last action. That's going to catch everybody. All right. Uh, Iculus. Lay on hands first. Yep. All right. So you get eighteen hit points back. Whew. Shellen, if you're testing me now, I'm fighting your brother. That'll work. Uh, it's going to be a 30. Hit. It's going to be a 12. 16. 16? Mm -hmm. 17. 17. Well, there it is, back in range. <laughs> All right. Uh, the uh, blade slams into Lucky, kind of grimaces, and it's like, oh, well, hey, that, that one actually kind of stung a bit. I bet it did. Yeah, you have your third action left. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 22. 22. Miss. Not even close. You you thought you were swinging where he's at, and he just completely sidesteps it, and your blade digs into the, the ground, and he's like, <laughs> man, you are slow. Uh, omelet. Oh, no. Yeah, but I'm not. He's like, um, it's your turn, oatmeal or yogurt or whatever your name is. <laughs> The absolute worst. Okay. <laughs> Can't even answer that question for you. Um, 26. 26. It's just what you need. Oh, oh Or this <gasps> is armor. 26. <laughs> kind of armor. Yeah, how does he have more, he's better than me. Because he's so dexterous, that, that adds to he's his. He's been evil a while. Yeah. He's, he's, he's just skin. Fortified with evil. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Worst fortification. So that's Eventually it crumbles. <laughs> 20 points of damage. Oh, nice. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Why are you so creepy? I hate mm. this. Ooh, that, that, that one stung a bit. <laughs> Striking again. 
<gasps> Nat 20. Yeah! Oh yeah? <laughs> Ow! Oh For yeah. a 36, <laughs> and it doesn't really matter, but 36. <laughs> Somebody put some peppers in that omelet, ow! <laughs> <laughs> you said you wanted spicy. Yeah. Somebody put ghost peppers in that omelet. <laughs> no, I am not. Really? No one? Yeah. It's a good joke. Ghost pepper. Oh, I'm booing my dice. Sorry, I'm booing my dice. Oh, no. Not the joke. <laughs> 17 times 2. 34. 34 damage. <laughs> oh, 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 that, that one, that one kind of stung. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's kind of he's kind of holding this side. He's like, oh, 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 woo! Last action. Just want this mother to bleed. All right. You swing wildly at him, and he just kind of ducks out of the way, and you give him a bit of a haircut, like one one piece of hair just goes bink, and he's like, oh, I like that one. Um, that is omelet, Liss. Hunt. You spend an action to hunt Lucky. And then I'm going to take a hunted shot at him. Okay. Oh. Fire your arrow. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh, listen, I need you. Uh, that is going to be 30. Oh, yeah. 30 will hit. Thank you. It'd technically be a 31, but it's okay. Um, let's see, let's see. Um, goodness, seven, plus seven, plus 14. One is 15 for that first one. <laughs> Ow. Ow. Ah. Uh, that's probably not going to do anything. Um, that's fine. He's I'll looking. My... He's looking real bad now. He's yeah. like, oh, oh, oh man. Last, my last shot. There's a lot of blood coming out of his mouth. Good. That's good. Um, 17 plus six is uh, 23. 23. But I think that is not good enough. No, I'm afraid not. That is okay. I spit in his general direction. <laughs> yeah, he's bleeding from a lot of wounds right now. He looks really bad. That that critical hit took a lot out of him, and he's it's no less he's, than he deserves. He's he's looking really terrible. Linnaeus, it's your turn, but you lose it just being stunned. You're just like clutching your your insides, trying to keep them inside. Um, he he's like he stops. And he, he just kind of, he just kind of drops the dagger and he's like, you win. I give up. No, I, I, you win. Oh, God. No, oh, that hurts. Oh, 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 oh. He's just like, ow, oh, wow, that was rough. He, he literally just dropped both of his daggers. And he's looking at all of you. Um, was it you? So... Just, just to be fair, Tariel, it is your turn if you want to do anything. He stopped fighting. Um, well, I'm going to take one action to move closer All right. to Iculus, and I'm going to cast Soothe at third level. All right. Um, That's going to heal quite a bit. So that will be 17, uh, 21 points of healing. You get back. <sighs> Thank you, Tyrell. Thank you, Liz, it is your turn. I... I you, can, you can talk to him before you decide on I what you want to do, right? I mean, it's a little freeform that way. Okay. He's like, oh, man. Wow. Wow. I, I, I thought I really had you guys there for a second, but oh, man, that axe. Ooh, ooh, can I have that back, though, by the way? That's mine. Just, oh. Shut up. <laughs> He's just laughing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All of this. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that, that one was fun. That one was kind of tricky. You have no idea. I know like three months before that, that, that bard made a public performance. Was that you? <laughs> was it he's you? Like, he's like, <laughs> why? What, 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 what would I tell you if it was? <laughs> what, well, uh, are you going to kill me? Is that what you're gonna do? <laughs> I mean, if you if you kill me, you'll you'll never find out <laughs> what what happened to his soul. <laughs> and he just starts coughing blood. 
like just a fountain, just kind of, you just. <laughs> <laughs> and his chest just splits open and out of him comes a wrapped ball of chains and in it is an eye and blades emerge from it lucky slumps to the ground his eyes gone vacant as he stares up to the ceiling and the ball of chain and flesh with an eye that gazes at you suddenly fades away into shadow and that is where I'm ending today's game. Oh, I no! want to thank you all for watching and encourage you to tune in next week for another exciting session. If you want to learn more about this story, the characters, and the Pathfinder game, please visit knightsofeverflame.com. There you can find a synopsis of our previous episodes, stats for all of the characters, and some Knights of Everflame gear to deck you out for your next adventure. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye. Coming up on Knights of Everflame. You're standing in front of the, the corpse of Lucky Longfinger. Going to burning hands and set it on fire. What in the nine hells was that? It was on Cthon. Who? You start to hear noise from the doors. Is there anyone in here? What seems to be this disturbance? Town guard! Maybe I shouldn't have burned him. I just didn't want to see his face anymore. Moments later, the town guard has arrived and are in no mood for any resistance. And there are immediate calls to drop all of your weapons and and put up your hands. You are you are under arrest of the town guard. Of <laughs> Linnaeus is just crying. <laughs> <laughs> and then he stabbed my friend. Hi, Daddy. Tario. So I have some news that uh, will probably not make you too happy. He looks at you with a pained look on his face. And you are no longer welcome in this house. I'm going to grab Hercules' hand, please. Look at us. We are here. I can't look away.